Two. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live with Blue Talks. Amplify your message with myself, Coach Scotty, and the amazing Laura Lake. Good morning. It is afternoon for me. So wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yes, yes day one yep. of five full days of my now, like one of my favorite people to hang out with, Scotty and I. And like, I think we have 20 different guests this week that we get to talk to. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. awesome. We have a very big full schedule. Um, it's really exciting. I'm really happy for those of us, those of you that have joined us today um, on all the different streaming platforms, Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube and all that kind of good stuff. And for those of you watching it later as it's recorded, which is awesome. Um, there's some really, really good stuff here. You know, I'm a big fan of podcasts. I'm a big fan of listening to things like that. And it's funny, for a lot of my life, I listen to music all the time mm -hmm. whenever i in fact i it was it was a point in my life i was incapable of driving a vehicle without music playing i needed to quiet the noise <laughs> and i've kind of grown a little bit past that but it's funny now i've come to feel that there's time to listen to music but it's kind of like chewing gum it it, it it's not it does but it doesn't get you anywhere and i love that podcasts and interviews they're they're getting me somewhere because i'm constantly learning and picking up even if i just grab one tiny little nugget it's amazing Yes. Because one of the, I took a course um, called the mastery of self-expression. One of the things they always said was there's nothing new in here. Everything new is out there. And so to me, this is about getting out there. Definitely. I used to not like interviews mm. and that was before I started doing interviews, of course. But the thing about interviews is I love how there is no one right answer. It's the way, as you mentioned earlier, you express the work that you do. So every single speaker that we have on today, we are talking about amplifying your message. Yep. Your message is different than Scotty's and mine and our next guest, Brad. But this whole week is about figuring out what your message is so that you can amplify it in the way that works for you, your preferences and your personality. So watching these interviews helps you see how these people with their personalities and preferences have chosen different paths and yeah. some they like, some they don't, and some they just run with and they mm -hmm. have it. So well, with fun. that, let's bring Brad on mm -hmm. to the stream. Hello. Hi, Brad. Brad. I have a secret so... for you. <laughs> I got my it's, it's, Christmas sweater on. It's it's Santa Laura. I got my mug. <laughs> You're all set. I love it. Holiday Scott, I love, I love what you were saying about how there are no new ideas in here. Mm. It's all out. It's brilliant. That is so true. And I, I too was one who loved listening to music. I have to have music on in the car every time I get in the car. But sometimes it's nice to just chill. Podcasts are great, of course. But sometimes it's just nice to chill and have the silence too. Yeah, hundred percent. And learning for me to be okay with silence. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. That was a big deal. And I'm an endurance athlete, so there was a lot of times like I don't like to listen to music while I ride my bike on the highway. That's a little sketchy. Yeah. Um, I don't mind running and stuff like that, but uh, on the highway, I need to be aware of traffic. And yeah, mm -hmm. you, you spend five, six, seven, eight hours alone on a bicycle on the highway. You learn to be okay with your own brain. And sometimes there's a lot of people that aren't. And I used to yeah. be one of those people. I was not okay with the voices in there. <laughs> <laughs> that was an unkind okay. audience. Well, Brad, hello. Yes. And where in the world are you? Hello. I'm in Alberta, Canada, and Laura, she's way off on the East Coast. I am. I'm in Halifax. Halifax. In Nova I, Ooh, I am in between. I'm in Toronto, Canada. Ah, T dot center of the universe. Well, we're speaking to the yeah, center well. of the universe today. And I didn't meet you before I went there this summer. Oh, I know. We made a trip the... specifically to meet online people. <laughs> In the well, we'll have to do it again another time then, for Definitely sure. We'll have to do it again. Well, Brad, please, uh, one of the things, that, there's different ways to play the, the, the hosting game, and, and my yeah. take on it is to not know anybody before I meet them. So square okay. one, tell me all about yourself. Tell us, tell the world who you are and what you do. I am, well, my name is Brad Walsh. I am the host of a podcast platform called Empowerography Podcast, mm. a podcast created to empower women. It is focused solely on women, women who work in the corporate world, women who are entrepreneurs, and it's all about amplifying their voices, amplifying their message, getting their messages out there to the world, just as what this is all about, amplifying your message. I am the vehicle, or Empowerography is the vehicle or the, or the platform for women to share their stories and amplify their messages and get them out to the world. So 
the goal, I mean, if we can reach, help reach and inspire just one woman through each of these women's stories, that's what it's all about for me. My background is I'm a photographer. I'm a boudoir photographer. That was my full-time mm -hmm. business before I made the step into this platform of um, providing uh, a stage for women to share their stories. It was all about amplifying the woman individually and showing her who she truly is in a light that she doesn't normally get to see herself in. So it's just, it's been a gradual progression. Um, I became a best-selling author in April of this year. I became a best-selling publisher in July of this year, oh, wow. uh, where I brought 30 women together to share their stories in a book called Transforming Pain into Purpose, Uplifting Stories of Empowerment. And so I brought these 30 women together to share their stories. It was, and again, that was, I believe, just an extension of my podcast platform. I'm going to make a guess about you that you love puns. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. So every time you're like, <laughs> in powerography and her street, like, my mind is laughing the entire time. <laughs> I love it. And I love that you brought up the, the transformation of women through boudoir photos. Mm -hmm. I used to hate my body and I'm pretty sure I told coach Scotty that cause we're doing his 21 day nutrition reset right now. Right. And I remember going through that. I remember thinking I hate my body, but mm -hmm. yet seeing myself through the lens of a boudoir photo will help me see myself in a different way or in a different light as you put it. And so Absolutely. I love that you use that analogy of the boudoir photography Mm -hmm. into this podcast of the empowerography podcast to really yeah. do that same thing but through their stories in yeah. a voice that more women might feel comfortable with because i know boudoir shoots aren't necessarily the it, easiest yes yeah. yes that's a, an incredible state of vulnerability for the mm -hmm. clients but you know it's honestly that in itself the the boudoir photography me being on that side of the lens, I get to witness transformation unfold right before my very eyes. And that is one of the most beautiful experiences in life that anyone could ever have the pleasure and honor of witnessing is someone's transformation. And that's exactly what happens because they come into the studio and they're a completely different person. They're very vulnerable, which is of course, completely understandable. Mm -hmm. But by the time they leave, it's like they're a different person. They've got this bounce in their step and they've got this confident air about them. And to know that I had a hand in helping these women achieve that and see themselves, it was already there. It was always there within them. It's just the photography session brought it out of them and made it more present. But to know that I had a hand in that and given back to another human being in that way and impacted their life in that way, there is no better feeling than that in the world. It is so powerful. I know. It's amazing. It's, you know, as a trainer, I deal with this a lot too. People come yeah. to you they want to help with nutrition and mm -hmm. health and it's great but you also realize there's so many layers yeah. all over the place well why is this happening why are you self-sabotaging by eating crap when you know it's not helping you so what's going on there and yeah um you know things i encourage people to when they start take a before photo you don't have to show it to anyone it's just mm -hmm. for you because in three weeks in six weeks in nine weeks in 12 in 24 take another one and look and, and there's a comparative and what i love about photography is it's in a sense sterile it, it just is yeah mm -hmm. it just is and it's fascinating if you're a parent and you have children and you talk to a young child and you you say you know what are your thoughts on your body and they're like I don't know. I have one like, yeah, you know, yeah. Like that, right? <laughs> yeah. They yeah. don't have all those layers and it's fascinating to explore the journey of, well, how did we get to the point where this beautiful, amazing creation that is us, that is our body mm -hmm. has all these tricks that we came to a point of not being okay with it. Yeah. Wow. It's That's huge. It's, yeah. it's massive. The societal conditioning, parental conditioning, all of the exterior things are what shape us and shape our beliefs about ourselves, which is horrible. So to be able to shift someone's mindset, even just a little bit mm -hmm. to where they see themselves for what they truly are after a session is just one of the most beautiful and powerful things to ever be part of. It's incredible. And you know this, Scott, because you see it. You are you help these people transform. So you know exactly what that's all about. Scott, yeah. when you had mentioned kids, 
It reminded me of a story, which I think I brought up during Blue Talks before, but Brad, you'll enjoy this. Okay. My daughter was probably four or five mm -hmm. and she looks in the mirror one day and I'm in a different room and I hear crying. So I walk into the bathroom I'm like, what's wrong? What's wrong? She looks at me and she's like, I'm just so beautiful. <laughs> I and love I, that. I laughed so hard, but I thought for sure something was wrong. How do you like bottle that up? Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Give it to us as adults. Yeah, that's it. I think that, well, I mean, this goes, this also speaks to the fact that we, when we start adulting, when we move into adulthood, we forget what it's like to be a kid. We forget that it's okay to play and to have silly thoughts and to do silly things and be a kid every once in a while. We need to do that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we need to do that. A sweater because it fits. There you go. <laughs> but we get so conditioned that we're not supposed to act that way. Yeah. Come on, stop acting like a child. No, there's nothing wrong with it. We need to embrace that more, I think, as adults. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's Definitely. fascinating how this is shifting and adjusting too, especially with, with technology in a sense, too, because with all the filters and stuff yeah. that wow. people use, like I've I've had clients come in to meet me to train with them. And I've seen them on that know them on Facebook or whatever, but they step in and I'm like, I can't. Uh, who are you? Oh, oh, you don't <laughs> actually look like like your eyebrows are here, not there. And you're like, yeah, wow, yeah. like, yeah. And I feel like, you know, you don't need all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it it's crazy. I I was doing headshots. I worked in corporate for 12 and a half years and I was the the photographer. I did the headshots at the company and I actually had a woman ask me to move her eyebrow because one one eye was lower than the other. She asked me to physically like in the image move, edit not? it so it, yeah. her it's like no, I'm not I can you're asking me to digitally change who you are. I mean no, be, be, be proud of who you are, accept who you, and a lot of people have problems with that. And that, I mean, that's understandable. That's everyone's thing to deal with, but sure. we need to embrace our, our beauty and who we are as human beings. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's that fun. reminds me of the Starbucks logo when they first brought it out and they were testing mm -hmm. it with, um, just the, the public, the first image or one of the first images was too perfect. They said that it didn't even look human. They're like, there's just something about it that we just can't. And they couldn't hmm. describe it. So then when they brought it back and other logos did the same thing, they just, they made one side bigger than the other, or they made yeah. something off symmetry. And they're yeah, like, yeah. oh, that's perfect. That's all they needed was a little bit of humanity to say we're there you not go. perfect. Yeah. Well, it, it's fascinating too. Like if we look at our, our culture, there's so many layers to this one as a trainer, I show people when I do talks to uh, presentations to high schools and stuff. One of the things I love to show is different photos of celebrities <laughs> as we always see them. And then somebody's mm -hmm. caught a picture of them just in life. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you yeah. barely even recognize them. Like I have yeah. a photo of Heidi Klum walking down the street with her children. She just looks like a wonderful lady, but but when you compare her to her her headshot, so to speak, she's not recognizable, with no. because she's got all the pancake makeup and all the things and yeah. all the stuff and all stuff. And uh, you know, there's one I've got with, with Harry Styles from One Direction, and he's all pimply and looks like a kid. And then, but but in all his headshots, he's flawless. And we have all mm -hmm. these kids, especially now, trying to look like the flawless picture, but the flawless yeah. people don't look flawless. No. It's, an it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it is all the airbrushing. And, and that's something that I'll always tell my clients is I'm very light handed when it comes to editing. I'm not going to change the appearance of your body, the appearance of your face. I'll, I'll remove blemishes. Sure. That's not a problem, but that's, that's about the extent of it. I'm not going to liquefy your body so that you, your waistline comes in. You've got the hourglass. I'm not going to do that. That's, that's digitally changing who you are. And I'm not, I'm not for that. If that's what you're looking for, then I'm the wrong photographer for you. Mm -hmm. So Brad, what got you into boudoir, boudoir photos to begin with? Did you know that the transformation was there and you just wanted to be a part of it? Or was there something else? Is there a story <laughs> Might be um, behind it? No, I, well, I mean, a big part of, of all the things that I'm doing with regards to the photography, the podcast is my daughters. They're a huge part of why I do Aww. this work because 
Both girls were bullied in elementary school. My youngest was bullied by both boys and girls verbally and physically. My oldest was bullied by girls verbally. And of course, to see the girls go through that, you you both know your parents. It's yeah. it's heartbreaking when your kids go through and deal with something like that. But, you know, when I step back and took a look at it through a wider lens, mm -hmm. the fact that the effects I think the worst part was seeing the effects that it had on the girls carry through with them to the different stages of their lives because they're now 21 and 23. So seeing how those effects have been carried with them from elementary school to high school to now their young adult lives are still prevalent. It's heartbreaking to me. And to think about the fact that when you look at it on a grander scale, the fact that there are so many people and Scott, I'm sure you can speak to this and Laura, I'm sure you can as a woman as well. The fact that there are millions upon millions of, of young girls and women in particular that deal with this on a daily basis and have it affect how they view themselves. They don't love themselves. No. They don't love their bodies. They don't love, they don't have the confidence in themselves. And that's heartbreaking that anyone should feel that way. So, I mean, I mentored with a woman who was based out of Florida and I fell in love with the genre. I, I didn't know anything about the genre before I was introduced to this woman. I met her through a mutual friend and when I saw her work and I understood the mission and the message behind this genre of photography, I, I fell in love with it. And I just thought this is where I hadn't even made the jump to photography full time yet. My thing was architecture and landscapes. I had no interest whatsoever. Oh, you were talking people. to the right people. <laughs> <laughs> I had no interest in photographing people at all. That was the last thing I wanted to photograph. I didn't want to photograph things that could talk back to me. I didn't want any part of that. And so when I mentored with this woman and she showed me the finer points of it and what it's all about, I just knew that mm -hmm. that's it. I had my light bulb moment and I thought that's the direction I've got to take my business when I do make the jump to full-time photography. So when I jumped into full-time photography, that's, I, I hit the ground running with that and headshots. And uh, my, my daughters are a huge part of why I do this stuff wow. and why I decided that photography, because I wanted to help women shift the way they see themselves i wanted to again show themselves show them themselves in a light that they don't normally get to see themselves in to help shift that mindset and change that confidence mm -hmm. in them yeah i remember hating my body from a young age for over 30 years and that's heartbreaking yeah and it didn't even start until my 30s where i'm like okay okay i guess i can yeah. love my smile and we'll mm -hmm. start there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a difficult thing for sure. Yeah, yeah there's so many layers to it. Um, as a trainer and stuff, I always try to help people remember that the focus is being the healthiest and fittest version of you, mm. whatever that looks like. It's not about looking like somebody else or, or the six pack or the, the yeah. it's not about that. That can be a byproduct of a healthy lifestyle, maybe, but it's about being the healthiest fittish version of you mm -hmm. and then just loving that and um it's fascinating what si society has added on to all that like you have to have yeah. there's even things your ratio of your eyes to your nose to like seriously <laughs> like yeah. we're humans <laughs> i know and what a couple of my favorite examples of this are um they both happen to be male examples but but owen wilson very mm -hmm. famous hollywood actor right yep and he's got that that crooked scarred yeah. nose sort of thing, right? Yeah. He was in uh, The Wedding Singers with... Uh, he is uh, Vince Vaughn. With, with Vince Vaughn. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's the blonde <laughs> surfer dude, but he's got that crooked nose. Yeah. And he was told as a young actor, you got to get that fixed. You'll never yeah. succeed. You, you need to go get plastic surgery and get that normalized and fixed. And he's like, well, no, this is my face. Oh. And okay. I love that he Lord, had... I just to, looked him up. <laughs> Yeah, so I know different. the name. I'm just not very good with names. So I'm like, give me a face. I'm great with faces. Sure. That is right. And so he was like, no, I'm not, I'm not changing it. And he is now one of the most successful actors in, in the in the list of whatever, top 100 males versus whatever. But because he looks a little different, he looks normal. He looks approachable. He's fine. And you look at Sylvester Stallone and he had that thing where one side of his face was semi paralyzed was a condition he's had since forever and when he wrote rocky they tried to pay him a couple hundred thousand dollars to not be rocky yeah they wanted to choose robert redford or burt reynolds or they had other, they didn't want they did not want sylvester stallone to play in his own screenplay and mm -hmm. he kept refusing 
He's like, yeah. no, the only way we do this is I'm Rocky. And they're like, no, yep. anybody but you. Yeah. <laughs> there's, you know, Nothing here's a quarter million Rocky. dollars to not play your own play. And in, in today's terms, that was like a million bucks. And we're talking about a yeah. million nothing like yeah soup kit to nothing and he's like no i have to be rocky those are my characters. <laughs> rocky's me you know and that's great like, all right scott <laughs> right? i love it Boy, can you hear his kermit i did yeah. like kermit can you picture anybody else as rocky no no of course not like the that's fact that it was so good is because he yeah looked the way he looked yeah yeah, I love that you use the term byproduct when you're talking about this, because that's something that I tell my clients, too, is that, yes, it's great that that we photograph you and you have these images, but that's not what it's about. The images are a byproduct. It's about the experience. That's mm -hmm. what this is about. That's what the session's about. The images are great. You can you'll have those to look back on 30 years from now and look at those and think, holy shit, I was hot. Like, look at me back then. <laughs> Or you, you gift them to your partner, your husband, whatever the case may be. But that's not what it's about. It's about the experience of mm -hmm. feeling confident and empowered and beautiful and sexy and all of those things. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Now, I had a little bit of a brush with boudoir photos that weren't quite boudoir photos. A friend of mine, okay. she's like, you should come over to my house. We're going to do a photo shoot. I want to feel sexy. So bring over some sexy clothes. So I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, business dress, uh, corset. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't really have mm -hmm. anything. So then I show up and she's in lingerie. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so we did a photo shoot anyway. Yeah. And it was, it was that vulnerable, just the two of us. We, we only shared tasteful photos. And of mm -hmm. course, none of her, because she didn't want me to. So I'm like, that's fine. Right. I have like a couple cute photos. Mm -hmm. But even that experience without even sharing yeah. was that kind of mini catalyst that I needed to be like, yeah, I am hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's not even about the lingerie too, which no. is another thing that I tell my clients off the hop. You don't have no. to wear lingerie. You can wear whatever makes you feel beautiful. I don't care if that's cut off jean shorts and a t-shirt. I don't care what it is. Yeah, It's whatever you feel powerful and beautiful in. That's it. What I find it's fascinating too, and I wonder if you've experienced this as well, Brad, like using Laura as a case example, like it would mm -hmm. never occur to me since knowing Laura that she's anything other than beautiful. Mm -hmm. How is there an alternate thought to that? Like to me, yeah. that, when you say, oh, I don't think I'm beautiful. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I, and I feel like your, your job is to help people see that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. It's beauty isn't only exterior as well it's interior too right it's not always about the exterior but yeah that's exactly what it is is showing them look at look this is you i've had women come into viewing sessions after the shoots and tell me that they can't believe that's them in the photographs and that that is one of the greatest compliments i could ever be paid as an artist or as a photographer is to hear that and to know that i've had that kind of an impact it's just incredible mm -hmm. we all know that there is this mental hurdle that we need to get over to even describe ourselves to other people mm -hmm. writing a bio is extremely hard yeah <laughs> i know for yeah. ourselves writing a bio for someone else is easy but these kinds of shoots the kinds of message that you're you're trying to share with the world is helping us to understand that our physical selves our mental selves our emotional selves we need other people on the positive side since we have so much negative so easily mm -hmm. in our lives to show us the beauty that they see. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's what it is right yeah. there. It's exactly that. And I'm constantly during shoots showing my clients the back of the camera while we're shooting so Ooh. they can see here. Look, look, this is proof. Look at how beautiful you look. And this then they're like, it. oh, and they open up a little and bit they, more. They and, they do, and, that's, little and that's exactly what happens. That's exactly it is because they're becoming more comfortable. So they, they're getting more comfortable in their own skin. And they're getting that feedback. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they get more and more into it. And I've had clients by the end of the shoot, I'm like, okay, we're done. We got enough. That's a wrap. Oh, I was just getting into this. I was like, mm -hmm. well, yeah. this, this is it. And they leave feeling better. And that's what it's about. Yeah. There's this whole story, especially for women, uh, where you have to be a certain person. You have to act like a certain person. You have to have this certain personality and looks and just all of it. And so whenever anybody mm -hmm. pin, pinpoints something, any little thing that doesn't align with that 
horrible perfectionist story of what we should be, then it comes to our mind of we're not good enough. We're not valued enough. And so it just, especially at a younger age, it just spirals really quickly because you want so badly to belong. And yes. that belonging means safety and that safety means vitality. And if you're not even getting that belonging piece, then that tribal mindset says that if I don't belong, I'm being kicked out of the tribe. But if I'm kicked out of the tribe, then I can't feed or dress or, you know, house myself. And, oh, my God, I'm dead. Yeah. That's just the way. Yeah, you're mind. right. That's it. It sounds terrible when you put it that way, but it's true. It's so true. And I didn't recognize that part of my story has to do with those stories that your daughters went through uh -huh. in high school, in elementary school. For me in grade nine, it was a bunch of my girlfriends who just rejected me because I started talking to guys. <laughs> that Like I didn't say anything mean to them. I didn't stop hanging out with them. And just one day they were like, you're hanging out with guys too much. We just... No, we don't want to be your friend. And they stopped talking. So like my rejection stories, I was trying to uncover for years because rejection, that whole tribal stories mm -hmm. where I work. Yeah. It's... And so all those little girls have stories like that. I don't know one who doesn't. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then you're helping them to be vulnerable and see themselves in a different way to challenge those types of stories. To say just because this one person said this one thing and then other people repeated, is that really true? Let's be brave enough to question. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then taking it to the next level from photography into the mm -hmm. podcast and having these women share their stories of how they they got to where they are today, what they overcame, the adversity that they faced and how they struggled through it. And yeah. that it's okay to struggle, that we are human and we're going to, to go through these things in life. But there is solace on the other side. You can make it through to the other side. And that's what mm -hmm. the point of the podcast is, is to illustrate to other women out there that, you know what, this person has overcome this, so you can do it too. It is possible. Anything is possible. Definitely. But it's leading by example. Excuse me. What do you find most exciting about hearing other people's stories? <sighs> inspiration. I don't, there's so much. Like, I mean, I pull inspiration from every single one. I've interviewed over 400 women now. Um, I released my 401st episode on Friday. And I pull right. inspiration from every single one of these women's stories. And honestly, I think for me, it is the honor that they've allowed me into their space to share their story with me. That's, I, I feel like, so the podcast is a vehicle and the woman who I'm interviewing is the driver of the car. I'm, a, I'm in the passenger seat. She's taken me along for the ride with her and I'm just in the car with her on her journey as she tells her story. And that to me is, is the best part of it is the honor that she's allowed me into the car with her to share her story and taken me along for the ride with her to be able to share that story with others. That's the best part of it. Do you see any patterns in what people share with you? Not necessarily specifics of their stories, but maybe emotional patterns or like journey patterns. Um, yeah, there is. I mean, there's the overcoming, getting, getting into the things and, and struggling through it working through it, doing the self work is a big part of that. <clears throat> a lot of the women have put in the self work. And that's not to say that even after you've come out the other side of that adversity or that challenge or whatever that is, that there's not more work to do. We are human beings. The, yes. the process is we're constantly evolving. The process is never ending. Yeah. You always have to do the self work. But these women that I've interviewed are up for the task of putting in the self work. And they know that there's still more to do afterwards. But it's this relentless drive to, mm. to push through and, and succeed. That's <laughs> those, those are huge things. Um, mindset shifts for all of them. It's just, it's so powerful to listen to these stories and, and be part of it. Mm -hmm. It's so funny, Brad, because relentless is the word of the day. For <laughs> is it? Buddy's <laughs> mindset video this morning. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> yeah, have, um, in the coaching program I have, everybody gets a daily mindset video with okay. a, a focus. And today's focus is relentless. Like <laughs> I, I will be relentless in the pursuit of my own health, my own self-care, my own journey. Mm -hmm. and, it, and you have to be relentless. You um, do. 
And it's fascinating too. We're in interesting times. I mean, I think back to the challenges my mom and dad went through mm -hmm. in the seventies and stuff. They didn't have any resources. No, this, and, and we almost, we almost have too many resources. Yeah. Some of the resources right. aren't great, but we have such an availability now for information and realizing that everybody's going through something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so many of the stories and the, the people that we hold as on an altar or a pedestal or whatever, they've, they've gone through all the mess. They, their life yeah. isn't squeaky clean and wonderful. Um, none of them. I mean, no. it doesn't matter who you look at, Oprah or Ellen or on the female side, or if you look at, I mean, I, I listened to Will Smith's autobiography or his book, Will, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, a little out of my character, but I listened to 50 Cent. His whole yeah. autobiography is fascinating what people have gone through. And another one, David Goggins had a childhood that just, I mean, I thought mine was a little rough, but hokey smokes. Mine was yeah. a movie film compared to his life. And, <laughs> and, and yet there he is being awesome. Like, I think that's the really critical, important thing is to be kind to ourselves and be mm. like, and you got here. Yeah, awesome. exactly. You made it. Yeah. 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 Some of the stories of these women I've talked, some of them are just like, oh, I can't believe you are still here after all the shit you've been through. Like it's how, how did you get through this? You, yeah. You're incredibly resilient and just, it's unbelievable. Some of the stories I've heard, it's just crazy. Well, I want to share one thing too that I'm curious as to mm -hmm. how much you've experienced this as well. I know for me, a paradigm shift um, really hit me hard when I looked at all of my points of my life that I declared as failures and you're mm -hmm. a loser and you're not good enough and nobody likes you and you're not worthy of anything and da 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 da. And I was at a, a, a self development course where we were doing all these incredibly hard things. They were mentally, physically, emotionally hard. And at the end of this one particular day, my, my partner for the day stood up in the gratitude circle and he said, I want to acknowledge Scott. And I was like, for what? I failed at everything we did today. And uh, he says, I want to acknowledge him because he never quits. Like it didn't <laughs> matter how hard it was and the stuff we were doing was unbelievably difficult. And every time he failed, he stood up and said, okay, let's do that again. And he was like, I didn't want you to stand up anymore. This one was a much larger flavor. Um, he's like, I didn't want to stand you up anymore because I didn't want to knock you back down. I, I but you kept standing up, and then I'd have to knock you down. And you stand back up. It was a martial arts thing. But all of a sudden, I realized that was my whole life. It, it wasn't that I kept failing; it's that I never quit. There you go. And and do you do you do you run into that a lot with with the women that you talk to, where it's like. Listen, it's not the fact that you had troubles. It's the fact that you never quit. Yeah. You get knocked down seven times. You get back up eight. That's that's what it's about. It's just having. It's true. Chumbawamba. Yeah. <laughs> just that you, you get back up again. You have to do that. You have to keep pushing through and keep going. As hard as it may be, keep going. Keep pushing because you'll you'll get there. You'll eventually reach where you need to be. And that speaks to your character. Yeah. One of those pieces that I always got stuck on was I thought, here's was a story that went in my mind. I thought that if I didn't immediately get back up, then that was a failure. So mm -hmm. then why bother afterwards? And then afterwards it was, if I didn't immediately get back up, can I still get back up? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I, I kept thinking that if I don't do it right away, then I'm not doing it right. When really there have been times in my life where I waited a day to get back up. I waited a week. Sometimes I waited two years, five years mm -hmm. to get back up. It's not the length of time between when you failed and when you got back up. It was, yeah. is there a point when you make that decision to say, I'm worthy enough to try again? Mm -hmm. Or I want this so bad <laughs> that I'm yeah. going to try again. Or it's too important not mm. to do. That's my mindset right now. I just mm -hmm. did a, a solopreneur conference and Coach Scotty was my MC. We did it in six weeks. So I planned everything, which is a really structured event in six weeks. Yeah. It was too wow. important not to do. So that's mm -hmm. my question for you, Brad. What is it about your work that is too important 
not to do. All of it. I have to do this. I, yeah. I wholeheartedly with every fiber of my being and without a shadow of a doubt, believe this is why I'm here on this planet. This is my mission. This is my purpose. And this is why I'm here is this work to help amplify the voices of women. And I think that now is the best time out of any. I mean, it's the perfect time to, to do this. We as men, I think, need to stand up more. More men need to stand up and say, we're here. We're allies. No more of this divisiveness. We've got enough divisiveness going on in the world. This is the last thing we need is more divisiveness. So if we come together, masculine and feminine, we can and unite. Think of what we can accomplish together. There's no more need. Yes, I mean, it's horrible what women have had to put up with and deal with because of the way men have treated them. Absolutely. And that's not to say, oh, forget about it, leave it in the past. But we got to look at it as, okay, it's in the past, but how can we do better and learn from that? And let's move forward. We don't need to keep dredging it up and dredging it up and bringing it up. Again, not to say forget about it, but <laughs> if we can look back on it and learn from it yeah. and say, okay, this is how we move forward together united masculine and feminine think of what we'll be able to accomplish in this world so this is this work is my mission on this planet so that's why it's too important to not do i can't i can't do anything else this is what i'm here to do i mm. love that so much it's about looking at those things as a lesson not a punishment mm. yes Ooh. exactly and I think that goes for everything in history. We we keep dwelling on the past and dwelling on the past. And yes, again, acknowledge it, but let's move forward and learn from it. As long as we can learn from it, mm -hmm. then let's move forward. Yeah. And and having like if there's a, an event in the past where things were a certain way. Yeah. Then we take that and we punish people who weren't there and didn't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's not. <laughs> no, that's not <laughs> no, it's it's setting us backwards again. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting too. I was uh, Corey Poirier is is the the mastermind behind the Blue Talks and all this mm -hmm. good stuff, and he had a, an event. <laughs> um, yeah, recently. Well done, Laura. <laughs> and one of the the people that we were working with in the event, um, actually, you know what? I, I it was Laura. It was your event. It was your solopreneur event. Oh. And one of the ladies was talking oh. about how to, to be in your strength and your power and, and, and learn who you really are in a powerful way. And I think that was Sarah volunteer and nobody would Say again. Was that Sarah? That started the day. Okay. And, and, and so I said, well, I'll volunteer. Somebody's going to be awesome. And oh, give that was with Nicole. That makes more sense. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it was <laughs> fascinating to me. Like, she said, well, I want to help you be in a, a mindset of, of be, that you're successful and awesome. And I thought, OK, so we're going to talk about all the crappy things that were failures where I didn't do well and how I can learn from that. And she never even asked me those questions. She's like, think about a time when you were really great. And I was like, oh, uh, OK. And then think about a time when you did something really well. And I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> and, well, aren't we going to talk about the times that I failed? No, no. never did. And it's the same thing. I think what you do, Brad, about, about photography is like, let's look at all the greatness. Yeah. Well, don't you want to talk about my pimple? No, no, actually. <laughs> or my stretch mark. No, <laughs> no we don't. Those pattern. are, but those, but those are part of who you are. That's what makes you beautiful is your stretch marks or your, your belly, whatever you want to call it. That's what makes you, you, that's what makes you beautiful. There's yeah. a song where it talks about stretch marks being bungee cords to pull you back. And I was like, now I love my stretch marks. <laughs> That's awesome. But it's it's sometimes it's those little things that just help you think about whatever it is differently. Uh -huh. Just a That's little it. bit differently to get you out of your rut. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. With the work that you do, Brad, there is a huge rut. So I applaud <laughs> yeah. you Thank for you. helping us Thank to get you. out of it. Because you've seen the results in your own life. Mm -hmm. All the women around you, they show up differently. Yep, 100%. It's yeah. it's huge. It is just incredible. When you give, let's again, with the podcast, when you give a woman permission to share her story, and I don't mean that like I'm giving her permission, but when you provide that space, when you yes. provide that space for them to share and shine, it there's it's just an incredible energy. And it's infectious. Yeah. Because it gives other people the opportunity to say, hey, wait a minute, Laura's been through this and she's come out the other side. So why can't I do that? I can do it too. And that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Aww, this has been such delight. I wrote a few <laughs> notes. 
It's never enough time, right? No. <sighs> it is yes. 40 minutes, right? Not 45. You come down to five more minutes, I believe, oh, to the okay. next guest. And um, yeah, it's spectacular. Do you know, remember the the assignment where mm -hmm. you, as a kid, you, you were to draw something and draw like it's, it's most dominant feature is the largest piece. I don't know if you remember that, but mm. it's funny how some people, if you were to say, okay, I want you to draw a self portrait, but I want you to draw the thing you think about the most has to be largest. Oh, like God. It, would be, it would be a pimple with <laughs> eyes, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? like, and it's, it's the tiniest little thing. It's not even a thing. It, it'll be gone. Yeah. Every week. Like wh yeah. why are you focusing on that so much? Yeah, it's it's that self sabotage thing. It's the how we view ourselves, and I don't know. I think that we need to start with the positive influences with our kids when they're very young. Just in 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 instill in them that they can accomplish anything they want in this world. They can do anything they want. Put in the work. Believe in yourself. You can do absolutely anything, anything, and that needs to start from a young age so that they just grow up not knowing any different that it's just mm -hmm. part of who they are it's part of their dna and if we start that at that young age i think that will help with the whole self-confidence thing and the self-sabotage it will help combat all of that stuff and and we will raise confident children into confident adults mm -hmm. so brad what are you working on right now what can we get excited about with you what am i working on right now um to, well, you know, I started a, um, on Friday, December 1st, I started a 30 day voice note challenge. Oh. And that is all about spreading love and happiness and goodness and joy. And all I ask, we have 90, 90 some odd people and 95 people involved, I think. And each of the 95 people, all that is required is they send one voice note to one person every day, a different person every day, just telling them, Hey, I appreciate you. Or, Hey, I was thinking about you. I just wanted to send you a note. Let you know, I was thinking about you say hello. And you do that for 30 days. And the goal, I mean, when I started it, the goal was to get 300 people on board. I obviously didn't get 300 people on board, but I mean, if we can touch what 90, even let's just say a hundred, times 30 days at 3000 met if we can touch 3000 people's lives in 30 days how powerful is that the ripple effect of that and you can completely change the trajectory of someone's day just by sending them a 30 second voice note that's all it takes is 30 seconds out of your day mm -hmm. every day one different person and so people have been loving it they've been saying how how amazing it is they've been screenshotting um messages from people that have received the voice notes saying thank you for doing this this is beautiful and so that that's what I'm working on right now is the 38 voice note. And then of course the podcast and all of that stuff. So just trying to keep the positivity flowing. That's exceptional. That's like a whole pay it forward thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and simple. It doesn't cost anybody anything and it takes 30 seconds out of your day and no one, I don't care who you are. No one can tell me you don't have 30 seconds in a day. Nobody. I don't it's give a shit who you are. I feel like we undervalue that too. Like mm -hmm. I know as a coach, when I've got my programs and stuff, if somebody does something well, quite often I'll just send a private message going, Hey, that was really cool. Or I'm really proud of you or whatever, whatever. And I, I think sometimes I don't, I don't realize how much weight that carries. Cause I just, yes. think, oh, of course you did something great. I should tell you, but I feel like maybe that's more rare than I realize. It is. It I is like the sure. random messages of love. I call them love notes. And yeah. then sometimes I'll even send images like this one. <laughs> I love it. And I'm a nerd. So, I mean, this axe isn't just any old axe. It is a great axe telling you that you're great. <laughs> and then my other one is this one. You're fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love it. That's awesome. That's epic. Yeah. I love it. Beautiful. So, then how yeah, do just... people reach out to you? How do they find you? Um, Facebook. They can Facebook message me. I have a um, a private Facebook group for the podcast called the Empowerography Podcast Lounge. So you can look that up on Facebook and my website, empowerographypodcast.com. Is it spelled mm. how it sounds? Yes. Empower and then ography. Okay. Yes. Double checking. Yeah. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I mean, I'm on Instagram as well at Empowerography Podcast. So those are the main places. But Facebook is my main platform where I'm hanging out, where I'll be found most likely. So then do you have any last comments before we say goodbye for now, for now? 
<laughs> we say see you later. Just, yes. Yeah, just, just keep being beautiful. You keep shining your bright, beautiful light out into the world and bringing your unique amazingness and epicness to the world. Don't let anyone dull your shine. Apparently my cat wants to say hi. Hello, kitty. He was crying in the hallway and I'm like, I'm in here. <laughs> That's fantastic. And thank you guys for this opportunity. Truly, it was a pleasure to sit down and talk with you guys. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, of course. It's been a great chat. Um, there's some we could go on and on, but uh, we could. We'll uh, we'll call it at this point. And uh, right. I don't see our next guest in the in the studio yet, so we'll have to uh, to see what we can oh. find what's going on there. But um, we'll switch it to just me and Laura. But Brad, thank you so much for your time and for all the great work you do um, in just creating an energy of awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I received that. Mm. Excellent. Thanks. All right. Have an amazing day. We'll talk again. You guys too. Take care. Yeah. Bye. So Rich thought it was on Zoom, not StreamYard. So I'm sending him the link right now. Awesome. Yeah. I just pulled him up too to have a peek and see if he's on that as well. so. Google Chrome. Yeah. So see above. And the worst part is sometimes Google Chrome will take 10 minutes to load. Oh, is that right? Computer. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm 15 minutes early. And then I click on the Google button and I'm like, oh, yeah, I use a Mac, not a PC. Oh, so Google on a on a Mac, it's just so slow and so laggy. Yeah. I'm not a, okay. a Mac fella. But I'll tell you, uh, Chrome does some crazy things too. Google and Chrome, they do some crazy things. Well, I see Rich has made it in. Oh, I'm going to add Rich to the stream. Rich. Oh, you're all dressed up too. Now I'm feeling the need for a Santa hat. Come on. Hang on for a second. I've got echo chamber going on here. So let me get out of. Hang on for a second. I've got echo chamber going on here. So let me get out of. That's kind of fun. We can talk to the future. <laughs> Hi, me. That's kind of fun. I'm trying to mute you guys. Oh, yeah. Right now I have multiple. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to mute you guys. Oh, yeah, right now I have multiple. This is Scott from the past speaking to the future. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this doing this today? I don't know. All right. It's all those I'll little gremlins that. Is it echoing in. now? I don't hear it now. I don't hear it. You don't hear it? No. I don't hear a voice from the past anymore. All right. So I so hate I'm putting on earbuds. Sorry about that. That's all right. I'm I'm naive and I don't follow things. Is that Green Bay Packers? Is that what that logo is on your hat? That is a Green Bay Packers logo. You're absolutely correct. There you go. Rich, it's good to have you on board today on the Blue Talk to <laughs> amplify your message. Where have we reached you? Where are you in the world? Uh, I'm in the Rock to Sage Media uh, Studios in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, you got a, you've got a good haircut. I see that. You know, I have to stay in touch with both of you, so I thought I'd go with the hat for a few moments for Laura, and then I have to go with the rest of the real Thank for you. Scotty. There, the best there of both worlds. That's awesome. Well, Rich, we're here to amplify your message. Tell us about yourself, who you are, what you do, who are the amazing people you help in this world. Yeah, I'm a media broadcaster coach. I've uh, been in radio and television for over 30 years, and what I do is I help you shine on camera and stage to amplify you and your brand uh, brand identity. It's it's all about you, not the technology. You are the messenger. You are the brand authority, and you're the one that needs the shine to get your story out. I love That's you so awesome. much, Rich. This this is why we connect so well so well. Because I've I've always had the conversation with entrepreneurs. Because I noticed this years ago, before COVID, one in five of the general population suffered from mental health issues. Mm -hmm. When it comes to entrepreneurs, it's one in two. Mm -hmm. So having that space to say you are the heart, hand, and face of your best business, especially as a solopreneur, means that you have to take care of yourself. You have to understand that you are that light. And if you're snuffing out that light all the time, how do you expect to shine in your business? I just recently heard that. And I think it was from you. And oh, it blew yeah. me away. <laughs> It yeah. absolutely blew me away. Then in all the numbers and all the stats, I've never heard that one. And we, and it makes so much sense, but it's so powerful that people need to hear that. I'm going to add another one that makes it even more powerful. So we know that the general population, this was before COVID, numbers have changed quite a bit since then. General population was one in five. Those service people, 
that we tend to think would be very easy to get PTSD, depression, insomnia, all of that, like mm -hmm. firefighters, police officers, they were one in three. So even they didn't suffer the most. It was entrepreneurs. Because think about it. Why do we get into entrepreneurship? There's something else going on. So then every conversation that you have, one of you probably is suffering. And yet who talks about it? Not really. <laughs> well, and partly some of us got into entrepreneurship because we don't play well with others. Let's be honest. So, so you, Rich, you want to be you your own boss. Your story? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. And you, 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 you realize that you have that creative nature and that creative nature sometimes does not play well with others. Yeah. So you have to figure out how to go do this, but you're right. There, there are lonely days. There's yeah. sometimes a check doesn't come in. Sometimes it doesn't go the way you want. So I understand what you're saying, but it's also so much fun being an entrepreneur. I love what I do. Absolutely love what I get to do. I think it's because we have a little more freedom of expression. I'm not sure if you've heard this before, but a lot of people talk about their business as their baby. And I'm like, Bleh. no, business, <laughs> business is an expression of who you are and how you want to live and how you want to communicate with people. So take that a step further. And that's why when I talk about your brand identity, it's the very Ooh. same thing. And that's why when you get on camera, you get on podcasts, you get on streaming shows like this, you have to know how to show up because it is your passion. You do want to share it. You are very willing to give away more content and more information than you ever thought because you have to, you want to, but now it's how do you? Yes. And I want to help people do that so well. It just amplifies and amplifies and helps them shine even better. So great segue there. Great job. Thank you. So what got you into this work? We're Scott and I are super curious people. So we want to know like why this work? Why not something else? Um, Actually, great question. Because a couple of weeks ago, I was having one of those restless nights and I was asking that very question. Why has it always been radio, television, the microphone, the camera? Why? Yeah. And it simply goes back to a very spiritual thing. God, whoever you believe in, mm -hmm. simply has told me to speak. Mm -hmm. It's really that simple. Simply speak and I will do the rest. So I cannot escape this. I have tried. I have done other careers. But I always end up back. Someone said, you have a great voice. Can you do a voiceover? Can, can, can you help MC this event? And no matter what, I'm always pulled back to the mic. So I literally have to do this for my very soul, my very essence. And I love serving and helping other people. I, it, it, as, as much airtime as I get and as much as I enjoy that, it's not about me. I actually love seeing other people shine so much. That's the kick I get totally get out of this. So I have to, I want to, but I can't escape it. Even if I walk away today, someone will call me next week and say, Hey, can you come do this thing for me? And there'll be a microphone and there'll be a camera there. So I might as well do it. Mm -hmm. When we were talking with Brad earlier, I had mentioned that there are some things in our life and our business where we just, we can't help, but just do it. <laughs> so what, what is it about doing the media and, and sharing your voice that is too important not to do. Because the power of media, whether good or bad, and we've seen it used both ways. Um, I believe there is so much power that can be leveraged here to help entrepreneurs, to help businesses. I mean, during pandemic, everyone grabbed a, a phone, a tablet, and they tried to get on and they tried to sell and save their business. Yeah. Um, a lot of them crashed and burned. It actually hurt themselves because they didn't know what they were doing. And the reputation dropped, the sales dropped. They didn't know how to do, land a plane and do the final sales pitch. They just didn't know what to do. So me, I'm literally, during that time, I had friends call me and say, Rich, you're good at this. Why are you good and why do I stink? And I literally became a life preserver, being coaching them and helping them put their bad business back together instead of brick and mortar online. Mm -hmm. And I see it being so important. This is never going away, you guys. The virtual stage is here to stay, and it's only going to expand and get larger and larger. So who better than to help them than someone that's literally been doing this for 30 years? Mm -hmm. It just makes so much sense to me. Yeah, and it was a big deal before the whole pandemic thing, but it got an exclamation mark. <laughs> yeah, yes, it did. And yeah. sad to say, there's a lot of other people that jumped in this space during pandemic. A lot of already faded off because they found out this is work. 
<laughs> this, this is real work to coach people and help people yes. to figure out how to do the branding, how to do the interviewing, how to do the media savvy stuff. People found out this was harder than I ever thought it was. Mm. I just thought you were going to talk to a mic and talk to a camera. Well, now there's a whole persona, now a whole personality. Now there's a, a branding image behind it. And people found out this is way too hard and they've backed away from it. So there's a huge space in this area that needs to be filled to help people fulfill their dreams. Mm -hmm. It's changing day by day as well. I think I know for myself, uh, I do coaching for nutrition and stuff and I, it's challenging to figure out, I'll say the algorithms and all the stuff to try and get out there and have people, I just keep coming back to, I'm just going to do a really great job and care about people and help people. And then they'll tell people and somehow it'll work. But I think there's probably a smarter way to play them. Just hoping. I don't think you're too far off, Scotty. Really? No. Because I coach the people, not the technology. Yes. Right. People bought so much technology early on. And Laura, I know you and I talked about this once they bought and they bought and they bought. And then it was like, I have no idea what they do, all these toys and gadgets. And they spent more time in toys and gadgets instead of them. Yeah. yeah, they are the brand. They are the the genius of their product. Until they figured out themselves, they were just babbling. Sorry, yeah. but they, they they were. So I work on the individual first, then technology comes second, because they people really want to know you, like you, love you, buy your products, but they have to know you. And now you have to learn how to break the glass. Feel like you're having a cup of coffee, having a relaxing conversation. You're not selling. You're just being yourself, but in a way that makes sense for people to understand you. Yeah, that's bridging the gap between the no like, and trust, which I call BS on. And yes, I replace do. it. Yeah, it was me. And I replace it with courageous connection, which is what the whole Solopreneur Conference was about. Because we want people to know that it's not about the technology. It's not about this one process where you're like, follow my formula and you'll automatically be oh. successful. It's not, it's understanding who you are, how you express your story, the work that you do, and then leaning into that because that is your magic, not my magic. And that's where the fun of coaching is. Oh, when, when you coach somebody, you hear right. them say the, the, like the phrase journey, they just say journey over and over again and say, have you ever thought about using the word journey in your marketing? No, why would I? Well, because I've heard it 10 times in the last two minutes. <laughs> You might want to think about leveraging the idea that you're on a journey and, or whatever phrase I have. And it's the yeah. genius that comes out that helps them finally crystallize. Here's who I naturally am. And here's how I can package together to have a greater impact. And without a coach, I don't think you can find that very often. I think you really need an outside voice to help you find that genius that you naturally are. Yeah. We were talking with Brad about, having other people around you. He does boudoir show shoots um, and helps women understand different sides of themselves and have that transformation. So even in business, we need other people to see our business and ourselves in different ways. That's how you elevate. If you just stick with this version of who you are in your business, you're not growing, you're just shrinking. Well, and that's where the whole brand identity comes in. You can be a car mechanic. Okay. There's, Billions of car mechanics, but maybe you only work on high-end cars. Maybe you only work on classic restorations. There's a uniqueness of who you are within the industry. Yes. And when you bring that to life and then you bring your own personality, your own phraseology into it, mm -hmm. that's where your genius takes off to a whole new level. It took me a while to understand my genius because... I love so many different things. And so I know a lot about many different things. The problem was, is I, I wasn't like the best of the best in any of these areas. My zone of genius is actually being right there in the middle. My zone of genius is being a bridge between this and that, between finding patterns between this ind industry, this industry, this industry. My mind is 50-50 or like 49.9 and 50.1. Finally, when I allowed myself to understand that I don't have to be creative or I don't have to be technical, I don't have to like pull myself in one direction and allow myself to be in the middle, that's when things started falling into place. So similar story, because I yeah. kind of re resisted the creative side. I come from a yeah. professional legal family. So I was like, 
tie and suit. Let's all get professional. And I try to do it, but I'm, I'm a sports guy. I come out of sports radio, sports entertainment. Yes. And I, I tried to shift into this other place, which I can play there, but it's not naturally me. So the more I now really relax and trigger is a true amplification of who Rich <laughs> is. Trigger is a brand name and nickname, but trigger really is that persona that I love having fun. I like playing. I'm a curiosity dreamer guy. Yeah. And the more I'm allowed to play in that th through the camera lens and do this with people, the more I shine myself and it also helps you shine better by letting me be you. And it helps you be you better as well. That reminds me of one of my phrases. I, you had mentioned just a few minutes ago that when you repeat things, you should probably be writing those down. So I actually started an Excel spreadsheet. I love my spreadsheets, but I have to manipulate them. Hence my creative side. So I'm like expel Excel spreadsheets. I could just move things around. I started writing down all of the phrases that I say. Okay. They're my own unique quotes. And one of them is this <laughs> version of me through words that is speak from your sparkle. I love it. Because part of it is I don't want you to speak from that place of pain. And the story behind that is people with stories, right? Mess to message style story people. We're trying to serve the people that are similar to that old version of ourselves. And if we look at that old version with pain or hate or it needs to be fixed or something's broken, that's what you're thinking about your future clients. And so all you're transferring is pain. So speaking from your sparkle is speaking from that passion, that love, that excitement, that drive that says, I can't help but share this. I can't help but be the messenger for this. So <laughs> years ago, I stumbled on my own phrase, not in a spreadsheet. I, I just know this. <laughs> uh, there's there, there's gold within you. Ooh, mm. My yeah. job is to mine the gold and help you see the gold. Who was it that I spoke to? Oh, one of my coaches. Her name's Kayla. She talks about that too, mining the gold within you. And when you find that gold nugget and the people don't know they have it, and they finally begin to hear it, and they finally begin to believe it, and then they start stepping into it, it is the coolest thing to sit back and watch the, the layers literally fall off, and they finally emerge to the person that you already see them as, but they have no idea they are. That's the fun of the media coaching. That's the fun of doing what I get to do in a lot of areas because they're nervous. They're scared. Yeah. They have no idea. And they compare themselves to those that seem to have it all put together. But when you get to that nugget and they start playing with that nugget, that gold, it just takes off. Okay. So you and I might need to talk about the next solopreneur conference because what you just said right there is something that I call value gems and value is a piece of the courageous connection formula. It is so hard to find speakers in that area. Oh, yeah. We need to talk. Well, also, one of our, our listeners asks, who does Rich love to work with? I love to work with entrepreneurs. Dreamers is a big part of it. I do love to work with dreamers, but they have that creative element, but you don't know how to put it together. Mm -hmm. So often when I'm working with clients, I'll talk about Walt Disney. I think Walt Disney was a genius. I identify with Disney, but he was the one that took the dreams and painted them out, etched them out. And his brother did the money side to make the dreams come real. Don't talk to me about money. Don't talk to me about budgets. I'll kill your company. Talk to me about the dreams and I will help you literally build it and take a one dimensional dream and bring it to life and add the layers. So I love working with people that have that next layer dream. They, they, they want to leverage media. They want to tell their stories. They want to find new creative ways. That's the people I ultimately really want to work from, from, from seeing uh, CEOs to entrepreneurs. Uh, those are the, unique brand types that I'm looking for. So Scott, what would be crazy cool that Rich could help you with? <laughs> if you had a crazy <laughs> cool dream. <laughs> well, I think you speak to exactly that. I mean, trying to figure out who I am. I, I don't, I don't know. I just do my thing. And then you say, we have to build your brand. I'm like, well, I don't know what my brand is. I'm just me. I'm just, I, I, I think, do you know what I mean? I think there's a piece where you need an external coach mm to look back at and go, Oh, well you do this and you say that and you're like this, you present this. I was like, Oh, do I? Okay. I guess so. Like I'm just being me. I don't, I don't know how to make that a brand. I, I'm just me. So great point, Scott, because I was in another business meeting with other broadcasters and the guy somewhat knew me and from behind his desk, he goes, so trigger, tell me more about what you really do. 
I was going to say my normal spiel. And the other person in the room that knew me, who had recently been working with me as, as, as a client, said he helps people shine on camera and stage. And that was the first time I heard the phrase from somebody else. And he mm -hmm. leaned back in his chair and goes, I see that. That's what he does. You're absolutely right. And I looked at her and I said, can I see that? Because that's the best phrase. I, mean, I did not even know myself what I did. I just did it. Mm -hmm. So she crystallized it. So you're, Scott, you're absolutely right. Sometimes we naturally do this. And it does take an outside coach to point us back and say, do you realize what you do? Own that. Take that. When someone gives you that coaching nugget, grab it and run with it. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful when it is that natural out of you. And I think it comes to so many layers too, because I've had so many people tell me I'm an amazing speaker and I'm phenomenal on stage and I'm, they got so much out of my talk and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm, I'm almost, I'm not confused, but I'm like, Oh, okay. That's cool. I wonder how I did that. Cause I, I wasn't, I wasn't doing it to doing it. I was just being me and people say, wow, that's really great. I'm like, okay, what was really great? <laughs> So let me add a quick story in here. So I have lived with a lifelong stutter. I used to hate the microphone, the camera. I would literally cry when I read a book out loud. It, it, it was horrible growing up. But when I found my natural persona and I began to step into that, the stutter faded away because I was not worried about the stutter. The natural person of who I was had to come through, Scott. Mm -hmm. So literally... That was that's one of the defy the odd moments. And I talk about defying the odds, going back to what Laura was talking about earlier about that, that whole spark thing. Yeah. I, it's so much fun to help people just relax because we're bent up on the green light. Oh, the countdown's on. Oh my gosh, hang on. Um, what was I gonna open with? What was I gonna say first? Uh wait, where's my microphone? Uh <laughs> we do all these things instead of just relaxing. And for me personally, that was a transition to make me the broadcaster, the speaker, the coach that I am was I literally just had to step in the moment and relax. It sounds so easy and we all know it's far from easy, but that's the magic of really stepping into your genius right there. When I, I'm going to tell you a bit about your genius, Scott. Well, I was just going to say, well, okay, thank <laughs> hey, you. But, uh, since we're here. <laughs> no, no, for one sec, but um, I think that's easy in the moment, but when you're trying to use, marketing and media that's to me that's the disconnect yeah when the moment when somebody says hey scotty can you speak on stage to our group and teach some things yeah no problem and it's awesome everybody loves it holy cow but now if somebody says okay hey, scott take that package it and promote it and put it out to the world so you can make a living <laughs> um I'm right with you i don't know how to do that i'm right with you the the genius stops at the bundling Again, give me a live, give me a microphone anywhere, and I will home run it. I get, and that, that's not ego. That's just, I know that. But yeah. you're absolutely right. Now, how do you bundle that in a way that makes sense to other people to buy on a regular basis? Because <laughs> this is so organic. This is so natural. I cannot quantify this and turn this into something that is A, B, C, D. I just mm -hmm. do this. This is why you have to have someone else who isn't your zone of genius to say the things that come easy to you are your genius pieces. Mm -hmm. Scott, one of the things that comes so easy to you is your natural ability to be yourself versus be caught up in what you should be. Mm. Also, your curiosity. You do. You're like me. You have this in intense curiosity, which makes this show flow so well. And you're not caught up in the, I have to be this version or I have to look like this. Oh yes, we both do that. We're like, we have to be this perfect thing. No, you're like, this is me. And I am genuinely curious about why you do the work that you do and who you are. And I genuinely care. Mm -hmm. That translates so well to people because most people don't care or they feel like most people don't care. And that bundling piece that gets you from there to that next step is understanding how people want to appreciate you. I've been learning about this one <laughs> through Dr. Joe Vitale's um, Money Loves Speed. Money is that appreciation of gratitude and appreciation. So what are people appreciating about you in your natural state? 
<laughs> Lori, you're killing me right now. Uh, because, <laughs> because they don't buy products. They don't buy packages. They buy you. And that's why this whole brand, you are the brand authority. I, I'm coaching this. I'm trying to drill this in the CEO's head. And they're like, well, we sell X, Y, Z. I said, no. No. <laughs> they're, you are the product. You are the genius. It was like, well, I don't I have an ego. You don't need to have an ego. You just need to realize you are that no like, and trust like you talked about, but you are so wrapped into this. You cannot separate KFC from the kernel. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you cannot separate. The original kernel was the brand. The chicken was delicious. The last several years, we've all seen them try to have a different kernel take on the role. Every one of those ad campaigns has failed with someone else putting on the costume. So KFC has gone back to, an animated KFC face logo and the original <laughs> Colonel's voice in the ads. Mm. Oh. That's how powerful the Colonel is. They are yeah. using his voice in ads because people do not believe in a fake Colonel. They believe in the Colonel and that's what makes it. Yeah. That's a unique thing. And if you can stand in your uniqueness, forget what anyone else says about you. Yes. Stand in your you, you, you uniqueness be the voice of your brand authority, then the packages will make sense. People will buy you more than they buy. You can say anything what you want about your packages, yeah. but because you're the one behind it, they will buy it. Okay. I'm going to say an honest piece because I've, I've hired a few people over the years, some are trade, some are money, whatever it happens to be. Like 99% of the time, I actually have no idea what I'm getting. Yes. I just know that this person is going to help me in the area that I wanted, period. I don't know that we're meeting on Mondays at such and such a time with such and such a link, or this is what's expected of me. I don't know. <laughs> Just and, know. and, and do you care? Not really. Not really. Cause I know the people that I like to work with, I can feel that they care. I can feel that there's a connection and I can feel that even it, cause I tend to do this with the mental health background. When I'm not feeling confident, I tend to step back. And the more I step back, the people like Scotty will reach out and say, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Even if it's like three days. I haven't seen you all week. What's up? Just wanted to say hi. Automatically, you're like well above and beyond most of the people that I've seen. Mm. That is powerful. My job. <laughs> no, boom. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't drop the mic. They're expensive. Oh no! I usually just drop a pen. There we go. Let me put. But but, it, but but again, going back to what you were saying, Scotty, about the whole bundling the packages. Stop trying to sell. And I know that everyone out there that sounds like counterintuitive to build your own brand and to market yourself and everything else. Stop trying to sell and just try to serve and help people. Mm. And out of that, you will grow and grow and grow. And again. As a public speaker, as a broadcaster, I'm the talent. I know that. I do have coaching. I have other things. But I am the talent that people literally now want me to host their podcast. They want me to co-host their special event. Now, there, there may be coaching things I do too, but they're literally buying me as the product. Mm -hmm. Stop selling and just be who you are in your genius. Simple. Mm -hmm. That will cut through so much of the other stuff that gets people caught up in how do you bundle? You know, what piece do I add in? What piece do I leverage more? Forget it. Those are so small intricacies where they, they switch you maybe one degree, but starting with you can switch you 10 degrees in one day. Yeah. Well, and there's, but there's another layer to this too. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I hear what you're saying. And I also like, I like to eat and I have these bills and things. So <laughs> Because if I'm just quietly sitting here being awesome all by myself, like, that's great. But it's not getting me anywhere. No, but that's where it goes to I'm helping people build their media empire. Yeah. You aren't just going to you're, you're, you're now streaming on multiple platforms. Like when I do my two o'clock lives, I'm on five different platforms at once. Mm -hmm. I do one little show, five mm -hmm. different platforms. You will bump in the trigger. Then I do my regular weekly show. You, you do. I mean, this is my second interview in two hours, guys. Mm -hmm. so people will bump into you and you just naturally do those things so for me it is this for someone else it's gonna be something else whatever that it is 
just keep doing it. You will make money. People will call you. They will buy. I mean, if you're an author, you're going to crank out books. If you're a creative that likes to paint, they're going to buy your paintings. But you're always in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. They're always buying you, but they will buy what you do. Does that make sense? It does. And there is, there is a technology piece to it. There is a knowledge point. Like we kind of poo poo the technology, but it's real because mm -hmm. you need to learn. There are things you need to learn. You need to learn how to stream on multiple platforms. Yes. Like you need to learn what like this software now StreamYard. StreamYard has us on six Facebook pages, Instagram and YouTube all at once. Yep. You need to learn how you need to learn how to do that. Yes. Right. That's, and then, that's a must. That's an absolute must these days. Yeah. Right. So, and then, then I think the next thing that I'm curious about is, is, is this what you work with and help people on is what do you do from there to have it propagate and go? Because there's a lot of noise out there. Yeah. Like every hundredth of a second, there's a podcast out. And, and so how does that? Well, I use a different product, but since we're on this one, I won't name the other product, <laughs> but my, my live show goes right to my YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay. Instantaneously, I have a replay built into what I've already done. I don't have to edit. don't have to do anything. It's already built into a replay. How ingenious is that, you guys? That you don't have to go mess around with anything. Plus, then now you can take that video, and if you go through Anchor or other platforms, you can upload the video. They will take the video, and they'll take the audio, split it, and you automatically have an audio podcast. You don't have to do anything. Just upload. Done. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's technology now helps you amplify your brand and diversify your plan on more platforms quicker. Then you chop them up and do a short. So right now my assistant is working on shorts for me all the time. So all these little lives, all these things I do, she's chopping up and she's banking them and we're just automatically uploading them on the week calendar. Instagram gets another one. YouTube gets a short again. Twitter gets a short. Now you're repurposing the content you've already done well and it adds more lead generation. It's endless how you can build your empire now. But here's the key. Your empire of all these social medias, instead of going out and sending all the stuff out, how does it point back to you? That's where the new game is at. It's always got to come back to you because you are the genius. You are the brand authority. Mm -hmm. And so again, that comes with, well, how do you, how do you do all that? How do you, how do I don't, how do I split? What's an anchor? How do I, who's it? I would do. And then, and, and also the thing that I find fascinating too is it's like, Oh, well, you just need Calendly. Okay. That's 20 bucks a month. Okay. And then you need Zapier. Okay. That's $27 a month. And then you need anchor. And then that's $37 a month. And you need that. Pretty soon now you're paying $3,000 a month for all these little things, 20 bucks at a time. You still don't know what you're doing and you're still not making any money. And oh, like it's a crazy world out here. Well, here's a stat, and you guys may may know the stat. The average podcaster does not make it past ten. Yeah, eighty percent of all pack podcasters do not make it past ten because of the very thing you're talking about. It's the burnout. It's the money. It's the endless circle. So you have to figure out how to get around that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have to start thinking now, like a, a movie TV producer. Instead of chasing the one off, one off, one offs. You film a season, 10, 12 episodes, edit, produce them, put them up, breathe, and go do 10 more quietly in the background. Now you're thinking like Hollywood. So, and then you get a sponsor because now you've already got 10 to 20 episodes up there. Now you can show the downloads. Now you can have things. Get one simple sponsor to cover your next run of shows. Then you have money coming in to help you then pay for the services that you're already investing in. But Media is one of those weird things. People will not invest until they see the product running. Mm -hmm. You have to create your show. You have to create the podcast. You have to show the finished product before you will get a sponsor. Think of like the first 10 as your pilot episode. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But then really like what all of this is saying is that you need to know yourself as the foundation. Once you have a solid foundation, you can build the tools to help you do what you already are doing easier, faster, yep. simpler, mm -hmm. but don't like try to do all of the tech all at once because no. you're going to burn out. You're going to have way too many expenses and not enough in. So when you're first starting, know you, share you. 
<laughs> know what it is that people are asking you about and appreciating you for. Give them more of what they appreciate you for because appreciation is money. Mm -hmm. um, and then to share it in a way that you can do in the moment. So we're not selling, we're sharing and sharing right. is from the heart. Selling is just buy my stuff. And the other thing to figure out in all that is what's the pain point you are going to help? What is, what, what is your genius? What do you have? I've got 30 years of radio television. I don't know where the camera is anymore and I don't care where the camera is anymore. What can I give you for my 30 years to help the pain point that you come to? So again, going back to, we're afraid of the camera. We're frozen. What do I do with my hands? Because off camera doesn't matter. How do I communicate with full body energy? I can help you with all that stuff. But what's the pain point that you particularly can help and lean on that rinse and repeat and stay on that pain point. It may feel to you like you're a one trick pony, but that one trick can be replayed over and over and over again because people need that one trick. I'm going to comment on that before Scotty does. Cause I know he wants to identifying the pain is exactly what people need because they don't identify their own pain. They just see it as normal or they feel as though they're in pain, but they're not recognizing what is normal is the pain. So identifying the pain is great, but staying there and constantly harping on it or focusing on it is the wrong thing to do. You're just a means to an end at that point. At that point, once they have identified a little more and you can articulate it a little more, then switch to the solution. Make sure you are solution focused, not pain focused. But in order for them to be understanding that the solution is the solution to their pain, you have to identify the pain and articulate it clearly enough that they can see that this is a solution no matter what is going on. So then you're like, if I focus on solution, then you focus on empowerment versus persuasion and manipulation <laughs> and all of those icky sales tactics <laughs> that we can get stuck in. Right. Yeah. All right, Scotty, come on, jump in. You know, you want to. Thousands <laughs> of questions. Um, yeah. There's so much of this is so great. So what, what of these pieces, do you principally help and coach people with like people like me, like people like Laura, we've got this great message. We've gone from mess to messenger. We love helping people, but we're stuck in the quagmire of not understanding how to create a media personality and how to get it out there to the world successfully. That's what I take you to. I, I take you from you to building that emperor. I, I literally, I focus on you and, and, and it is the physicality. It is the storytelling. It is what are the things that you just ooze out of, but you don't know you ooze out of? I'll help you crystallize that and turn that into what that brand identity, what it is that is magical you. But you do need to learn media skills. Again, if, if you're going to be on podcast shows like this, streaming shows, if you're going to be the one being interviewed, which I highly suggest, not just hosting things, you need to be the guest on shows. I have a whole way of helping you coach to be a good media guest. If you're not a good media guest and they see and watch you and listen to you, you won't get more calls. You won't get booked on more shows. So you literally have to learn interview style skills to show how to give good answers, to show how to be entertaining and fun. That's all the personality side. I work primarily with the personality so that your brand and your products will shine because you shine so brightly. <laughs> I'm reading the comments. Aaron says, Rich is awesome. I needed this. Thank you. And boom, great advice. Focus on solutions, not the pain. Yeah. Hmm. That's huge. And <laughs> that's a big thing nowadays. Like I am interviewed on a lot of podcasts, like mm -hmm. one to two a week kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty casual. But I just chat and I, I, th I think I'm coming across. Okay. But it'd be great to, to find out what, ways I could be better interviewed. So do you have one or two go-to stories that will help you explain what you do and how you do it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Those are the things that you want to hone on because no matter what every interview does, even if the interview host goes rabbit trail, you should know how to pull it back around to where you want. You can control your interview. Right. The host does not. Yeah. Those are the skills I help you do. I help you so that you can get that story in and make it sound natural, even if it didn't fit the question the guy gave you. Politicians are great at this. Mm. Politicians can turn any question back into a campaign stump. People can do the same thing on these interview shows as well. 
Yeah. I was at a networking event a couple months ago and it was called the pickle game where they just asked you this random, completely random question like rich. Um, have you ever worn purple earrings? <laughs> and then you have to find a way to bring that question back to the work that you do naturally without making it feel like you're just having another sales call. Yeah. So rich, did you ever wear purple earrings? <laughs> The last time I wore purple earrings uh, was, was when I was doing the show to talk about your persona. And I wanted to amplify how being on camera, you want to have accessories to call to your best features. So my purple earrings hold to my face to show my great smile. See? And see how it like wraps around every time? Just complete randomness can every single time be a part of you, be a part of your business, be a part of your message. Just got to learn those skills. Rich has those skills. Well, that's why I do an open mic night now on Meetup. Every uh, every two weeks, I'm doing an open mic night just to practice in a safe environment. Those type of things, Laura. Literally giving them, uh, not not this week, the next week, we're going to be talking about our favorite character. Not actor, our favorite character and why we identify with the character. Give hey, a Lord, short five, five to seven minute little talk on your favorite character. Little do you know that I cosplay during the Entrepreneur Summit. I co-host the Entrepreneur Summit. And oh, so I get to, yeah, I get to cosplay as different things that are fun. Oh, Scott, do do your Kermit voice. Well, I just wanted to say that I really align with exactly what you're saying. And I mean, I, I do have a character that I align with and it makes a lot of sense. I create my own chaos and uh, my world is nuts and it's of my own design. See, and now people, you have to understand, that's what you do to create your brand. That's what you do to set you apart from any other speaker, any other coach. You can do those very things right there. That's, that, that, that's perfect. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand how that helps anything. <laughs> be, 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 no, really, it, it, it does. Because when you do that once in a while in an interview, if you bring Kermit into it and they say, what makes you distinct? What's one of those things that people don't don't know about you? Hi, Hall, Kermit the Frog here. When when you do that, people will go, I didn't know you did voices. Oh, I, I don't. I just do Kermit. And they again, it sets you apart by doing those type of things. Okay, quiz time for you, Scott. What is the thing that I tend to bring into almost every interview? The thing you tend to bring into every interview? Well, I find some way to work superhero it in. Superhero and geekiness, which I love. Yeah, Mario. Yes. <laughs> games i keep my mario hat my nerdiness like i am searching for my fellow entrepreneurs who have stories to tell <laughs> well and today i don't have the virtual green screen because i had to jump in to stream yard but this is your billboard this is your best place to market and brand so if you are a nerd which i identify with you completely i'm a star trek geek oh. if you're in if you're in that space this should show your nerdiness Oh, show your brand nerdiness. Put your Mario Kart up there and show them how many points you got in the Mario Kart. Like, Come on, you know you want to. That's the type of stuff. I mean, again, if you got Kermit, Kermit should be on your back wall or sitting next as a co-host with you and ha having Kermit right there on camera. This is the stuff that breaks the glass from mm -hmm. professional to personal to revealing a little bit about you and why you are so special. Mm. I remember past interviews where the conversation is moving along and then there's something in the background that piques my interest. And I'm like, wait, 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 <laughs> you have that on your shelf or you have that on your wall or you have this particular book. And then the conversation automatically goes to that and they know how to bring it back to their business. Yes. Yeah. Authors should always have a book right there that elevates their current book. Even if they're not talking about their book, their book should be right there. Wait, are you in this one? Uh, I am not. You're not a number one? No, I'm not. Not unless I got put into it without me knowing, no. which, cause, which is likely possible. Uh, <laughs> you're in a blue you know. box book, though, aren't you, Rich? Yes, yes, I am. Oh, I which just number can't are you in? I just can't remember. <laughs> you can't remember. I'm, I'm moving too fast, Laura. I don't remember <laughs> what I mean. But the brand, that's why, you know, Trigger has been the brand thing for me for so many years. I have done medical interviews because I've gone through some very serious medical things. I've been in the middle of very serious interviews and they've stopped and said, sorry, we just have to get this out of the way. 
can you tell us how you got the name Trigger? And right away, the story goes someplace else. You're right, Laura. But yeah. then with me, they'll say, do we have to call you Rich from now on? Can we, can, we, can we just call you Trigger the rest of the interview? Completely breaks the glass. Yeah. yeah. Completely changes the conversation. Now they really feel like they're in the club with you. Yes. What can you do with your brand to have that same impact? Find that unique thing, put it out there. It does make them feel like I'm part of your tribe now. We got so caught up in all of this. I didn't ask you what you're working on and how we get a hold of you. So <laughs> Rich Aaron um, is very excited. He's he's like, I'm ready, Rich. Let's talk about becoming a really <laughs> fast. I want to go on as many quality podcasts as possible. So how do people work with you and where do they find you? So rockthestagemedia.com is the best place to go. It shows you my services. It will give you information about Rock the Stage Show. Um, or just email me directly, rich at richbontrager.net. Um, I still answer all my own email, and that's something that I am personally mm -hmm. passionate about. It's a direct conduit to, to me. I don't want to hand that off. That's something that I really care about because I care about you. Uh, those are really the two best ways to, to find me at rockthestagemedia.com. And I'd love to connect and help people grow their brand, their their their, their personas, um, because like it or not, this is fun too, you guys. It's not just business. It's not just money. This is fun. We don't need ABC and CBS and NBC anymore. We can be our own media company right now. How cool is that? Yeah. It is a new world. It's amazing. And, you know, it is a new world. It is amazing. And it's complicated. And yeah. having somebody like you be the tour guide and the coach, I think, is, uh, is phenomenal. Thank you. Gift. Thank you. I enjoy doing this stuff. Yeah, it shows. Like it just really shows, right? It's just easy and it makes sense. So yeah, that's awesome. Rich, it has been a blast. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Laura, for having me. Appreciate it. Always love dropping in. And it's always great. By the way, I just did a blue talk. I have to give a plug there. We did the Miami one recently. Oh, Had yeah. a great time with Corey and everybody there. Yeah. Uh if you have not done a blue talk, uh you, you you need to do a blue talk. Uh, but the team that does this, the on-site, and I'm going to add this in, the connections you make are so powerful. The people that I connected with were on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook, we're doing our own private calls. It's not just an event for speakers. It's for speakers to get to know other speakers to help each other grow. You need to get in, plugged into Blue Talks. Yeah, big time. Corey Poirier, our uh, amazing friend, mentor, coach who created business life in the universe, blue talks and this amplifier message. He is phenomenal. And uh, yeah, thank you for being on the show today, rich for sharing so much wisdom. And uh, if you want to get a hold of rich, you really want to head over to rock the stage Yes. Thank well, you, sir. Thank you. Have me have, have a great rest of the day on day one. Yeah, <laughs> we'll you know. chat later. Sure. Rich. Bye. 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 And I like that. Aaron said, I want to learn to give a blue talk in 2023. Nice goals. That is awesome. So we have our next guest, Bettina Maria is up next. Now I do have her showing here in the backstage, but her screen is blue. So I don't know if she's got her oh. mic working, but I'm going to bring her on and see what we get out of it. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. If not, we can always chat. We can improvise. So I don't know, Bettina, can you hear us? I can. Yes. Oh, good. Well, we can't see you. So it could be a matter of turning your microphone on or giving permissions to it. Oh, at least yeah, we can hear you. I did, so I'm just. Um, oh, I don't know what that is. Technology okay, settings. I'm new to this. That's okay. okay. It we shows that my camera's on. So, ah, uh, other than my little. There you are. I was gonna say, do you have one of those slide things like I do, where sometimes you forget? <laughs> That was complete. That was completely it. Oh my goodness! Oh wow! Wow, wow! Nobody wow, can wow. see you picking your nose. Just, <laughs> just I'm like, oh my god! Yes, yes. I'm going. How come it shows that it's on? It's like yep. everything is there. I'm just not sure what's happening. So anyway, yes, it was uh, the sticky note at the top of the screen. So that yeah. is all good. That is the fun and joy of live broadcasting. We are real people. We are actually doing this and, and this isn't recorded and fixed later. This is us. <laughs> <laughs> is that going to be actually on the, on the recording? Oh, yeah. It will be, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, it's real. We're actual humans. 
And I think that's true. Like, that's true. It's like, like okay, we're just like, yeah. Yeah. Well, Bettina, welcome to Blue Talks. Amplify your message. Please yeah. tell us all about yourself. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just turning up my microphone here so I can hear you a little bit better. Um, yeah, what a, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a, I, a, a transformational guy teaching for uh, the last 10 years, started out in um, teaching Reiki, and that evolved into teaching really about the energy world, uh, helping people transform um, in regards to their, their thoughts, their, where, where they're at in life. And because uh, we get caught up in those thoughts and the different things. I also became a certified breathwork facilitator during that time, which I found very, very powerful. It was very much in regards to a lot of things that I was talking about and teaching. And I just found this beautiful blend of bringing in uh, the power of our breath and the wisdom of our breath and connecting into that as well. Um, so I lead heart to heart calls, connecting with like minded souls. Uh, with people down in California, Florida, Mexico, across Canada, um, sharing the message, getting an opportunity to connect together and and share our journey. Um, sometimes when we share our journey, uh, it plants a seed for someone else to see that maybe something else is possible, that something uh, that, that we're not the only one experiencing that. There's many times where we go, oh, my God, you too, you're going through that? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, there's, uh, as you said, Scott, there's that uh, that humanness in, in regards to it. And sometimes we look up to others that, uh, um, in a different way and we just realize, oh, my gosh, I'm just so far from, uh, you know, where I feel my potential or possibility is. And mm. then when we begin to share, we realize that we're, we're all in that journey of, of the, the human journey. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, I'd love to dovetail into something you said there, breath work. And yeah. I think there's a lot of people, I could be wrong, but I feel like maybe there's, there's the open-minded people. And then there's the, the average general population. They're like breath work. That just sounds dumb. Like, but I got to tell you personally, I was in a near death crash in 2015 in a race. I cartwheeled down a highway at 70 kilometers an hour, 42 miles an hour on my bicycle. And I split my skull open and I broke my arm, my shoulder, my ribs and my knee and my, all this stuff. And I worked through all kinds of different therapies. I had metal parts put in and taken out. I had my knee rebuilt. I had all these things, all these things, all these things. And it wasn't until May of 2018. So three years after the crash that I actually flew to Germany and worked with a gentleman who does something called vegetative training where he does breath work to wake up the vagus nerve. Yeah. And I flew to Germany. I had heard of this man. I knew people that had worked with him. And it was like <laughs> I, I, enough that I thought, okay, because it went from woo woo to practical. There was a bridge somehow for me. And I went to Germany and I came back and my whole life was different. My the way I was in my body, my energy, my ability, my everything was different. And people say, well, what did he do? What, like, what? Well, I met with him once a day and I laid on a massage table thing and I breathed for one hour, yep. sometimes a little longer. Yeah. Well, yeah. But what, what trick did he, no, I breathed. Well, what else did you, no, I breathed. That wow. changed your whole life. Breathing. Yeah. <laughs> people yeah. don't get it. So tell us. People don't get it. So what are they not getting? And how are we? Well, the power of our breath. And and so many times, you know, particularly I did watch uh, and I saw your video in regards to your, your whole journey and the different things. It's like, wow, powerful, powerful. And really to see, you know, where you were and now where you you have come and and finding something with with our breath and how vital it is um, to us. It is it is our life force energy. Uh, we are born with it. Uh, you know, the moment that we are born, we take our first inhale. And the moment that we um, leave this world, we take our last exhale. And everything in between that is our experience of life. 
though many times we have disconnected from our breath uh, through um, accidents, through disease, through illness, through trauma, um, through emotional, just the, the stories and the different things. So uh, many times we're not breathing um, and accessing the, you know, the wholeness of who we are. And so in connecting to our breath, we bring more of that, that wholeness. And it's exactly as you said, Scotty, it's just like, wow, I, and I'm just breathing. But what happens is we start to breathe better by bringing awareness to our breath. Because many times we're not even aware of it. I, I would um, even invite that you're probably a lot more aware of your breath now that you've had that experience, you're going like, okay, I feel like I'm checking out or I'm not connected or I'm not here in the moment. And just simply by taking a few moments to breathe, all of a sudden we're, we're more present. We can be with whatever's arising in our body, with whatever's arising in our physical. So our breath brings us more into that present moment of what's happening. And it takes practice. I'm going to say to build a, the, the muscle. I, I uh, have taught in 2020, not in a million years that I would thought I would teach uh, breath work online, but it, uh, you know, COVID 2020 changed a lot of that. And I started teaching online and really found that it was so empowering for the other person on the other side of the screen because by simply using their breath and the class that I was teaching, of course, was called Simply Breathe. Mm -hmm. Let's just breathe and bring that awareness to the breath. And the breath is so powerful because it contains that wisdom and uh, uh, and the power of our breath. And people would say that their anxiety um, reduced simply by breathing and bringing in that awareness. And it was so, so powerful. Yeah, it was just like mind blowing in so many different ways. And then I equivalated, it's not something we just do now. It's like continue to build that muscle. So the, the invitation was to breathe 15 minutes a day. And if you wanted to do more, you could, but you were rebuilding that connection to your breath. And as you build that connection to your breath, you build the connection to yourself. And so again, the breath knows where it needs to go. It's just as we breathe ourselves into being. And so as we bring that awareness to our breath, it will start to deepen into our body and start to expand because it's going like, wow, I'm just like, I'm feeling there's something, a feeling that begins to happen. And our breath is, is the guide and the teacher that takes us there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so the, the way that I heard it the first time, because I was like, Scott, I was like, what do you mean breathing? <laughs> Simply breathing. I breathe all the time. breathe all the time. time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but the first time I heard of, of what it actually does, I was reminded that it's not the brain that commands that chooses all of this stuff. It's the brain that commands based off of the data that it's getting. So our physical body is telling our brain what is going on. If our breath, something that we can control, <coughs> is really fast, what do you think the brain is responding to? Something that's stressful or exciting. And if the breath is slower, what do you think the brain will be responding to? Something that is more relaxing or easeful. So when we're controlling our breath and anything in our physical body that we do have control over, like breathing, then we can control how our mind responds to the physical data that's being considered. Absolutely. Yeah. And then with the breath being, like you said, that core, that core power of our being, like that is the basis of who we are. If we're not breathing, we're not alive. So... <laughs> It is definitely one of those core things that we can control that has a huge impact on our nervous system and our brain and how it responds back. So, yeah. Uh, and I'm getting comments about your painting, too. As soon as I saw your painting, it reminded me of the heart that I used to draw as a kid. I used to always draw flames around oh. hearts. And then Aaron's like, um, I, where did it go? Oh, the energy of that picture behind you is powerful. <laughs> It is. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Uh, I was helping a friend out in BC open a studio and I saw this painting. And I said, OK, that's got to go home with me. They hadn't even the artist had just brought it in. They had, didn't even have a price on it yet. But I just I knew and I felt like that power, the painting, the just the flow of just everything. Um, it, 
it was like, yeah, okay. (laughs) And it's like, it's the center centerpiece of um, just, it speaks so much just in regards to the colors and everything that's flowing and, you know, bringing in that heart energy, the power of the breath connects us into that heart space. So what you're talking about is like that, um, when we're in that stress mode our, and our mind is, you know, running the show, we're in that um, sympathetic, we're in the, you know, the fight, flight and, and freeze and, and uh, cortisol and everything else is, and then we lose the, um, the clarity hmm. and we're all confused and we're muddled. And it's simply, you know, I, I invite people put a, you know, a hand on your heart and now just begin to focus on your breath. Bring your awareness into your breath, into this moment. Mm-hmm. And this is where everything is. And then what happens is our parasympathetic system kicks in, which is our rest and digest. So I can just rest and I can be present with whatever is here, whatever I'm feeling and know that it's OK. I don't have to run from it. And uh, that's where that, you know, that power that that is, because many times we want to run away from those uncomfortable things and go like, okay, I'm not staying here. <laughs> um, so I yeah. Love, I love that you brought up the stress response as a part of this. Cause this ties right into the work that you're doing too, Scotty. It's like if, if your, excuse me, mind and body are too busy thinking about and reacting to the fact that you are in stress and therefore like your physical body is stressed, your mind goes, we're stressed, which then tells your physical body to do it again. And if you're not controlling it, <laughs> It's just this horrible upward spiral or downward spiral, however you want to think of it, of your body not working the way it would typically work. So you're losing that digestion, just like you said, Bettina. So in your work, Scotty, you're you're working with people on their nutrition, their fitness. If they're too busy being stressed and in that fight or flight response and not controlling their breath, then how is that affecting their digestion Mm -hmm. with the nutrition reset? How is that affecting the healing of their muscles through that that training? So breath work can be a part of so many different things. Absolutely. I want to invite you in on something too, Bettina. Maybe you can explain this for us, for the people listening, because there are some questions coming and stuff about Mm -hmm. breath technique. I know for me, what has surprised me is as an endurance athlete, what I've been doing for the last little while is for five minutes before I go on a run, I do breath work or before I go on a big bike ride, I do breath work. I just, I do five minutes. I set the timer on my phone and I lay on mat in the floor and I bend my knees and I put my hand on my heart and hand on my belly. And I feel myself breathe slowly in through the nose, out through pursed lips. And then I hold for three, two, one. I do it again. I circle through that and I feel where it goes and I um, connect to it for five minutes. And then, then I go for my run or I go for my bike ride and I have more power. I have more, I, I go faster it's less effort. And so I think maybe speak to that because I think some people say, well, breath work, what does that mean? Like, do I have to change how I breathe all day long? I'm like, no, it's just, it can be just a five minute investment Mm -hmm. of just hang on a second. Just breathe. Okay, go. Because in this life of stress, 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 we're in the sympathetic response system. We don't know how to turn that off anymore. Does that make sense? So what can you, I bet you can layer a ton on that. We could just be quiet for half an hour and go. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's a, that's a absolutely beautiful. And part of that is you're taking that moment to oxygenate your body. So when we oxygenate, when we become aware we're on, when we take that inhale, we're opening and oxygenating our body and we're going into uh, that, that connection to self. And then when we take that exhale, then we're going into that relaxed, we detoxify um, state. And so that's that process of the inhale and the exhale. Now you're oxygenating your body and then you go out for your run. So now you've fueled your body rather than, okay, I'm going to go out for this run. And also when you're in that stress and you're in this mind, you're in the cortisol and all this is, is kicking in when you just like, and I love, you know, I invite to the hand on the belly. Oh, yeah. Hand on the heart, hand on the belly. It's like your heart and your soul connecting. And it's like, now I'm gonna, I'm now here. I'm now aware. And now we invite the breath in and we actually begin to slow that down. We now kick in um, like oxytocin. We kick in dopamine, which are those like feel good hormones. And now when you go out in the run, your body is not in this constricted state of well, all the cortisol. Prone. It's now you've now relaxed it. And now you can go in and when you do your run, you're now in a, a, a relaxed state. And so very, very powerful in those regards. And that's the 
we, do we have to do that every all the time? No, it's like when we come into a, um, a stress state, it's like, okay, c simply connect to the breath. Okay, so whew. And now all of a sudden, you have more clarity, you have more connection to yourself, rather than being in the, all the scattered of everything that's going on. And I love where you shared, you know, the, the process of how you breathe. There's many, many time, types of um, breath work and the ways to breathe. And it's finding what works for your body. So I've been trained in, in three different types of uh, breath work. And in, in heavy duty, we're bringing in lots of prana energy. Like you breathe in through your mouth and out through your mouth. And whew, there's a lot of energy and activation that can happen. Um, sometimes that can be too much for people um, when we're in a state of anxiety. So sometimes it's more of just that simple. I'm just going to inhale and exhale through the nose and out through the nose, which then brings in nitric oxide into our body, which is also another important element of that. So it's again, we kind of play with that and see where the dynamics and where you're at in your process and what's going to work for you. So there's no right or wrong. I know when I'm doing the breath work, I will invite people to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose, which is in that relaxed state. And so we're all we're doing in that first 10 to 15 minutes is we're building the connection and the muscle of the breath. So then when things start to get activated, you've already built that connection to your breath simply by just inhaling and exhaling. Then the, the invitation will be to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And let's just seize so that we can actually, we, when we breathe out through our mouth, we can move more energy, more of that, uh, um, whatever, uh, through our breath. And then if we want to have more of an activated um, breath uh, experience, then we can breathe in through our mouth and out through our mouth, bringing in lots of uh, oxygen, lots of prana energy. Um, so again, there's, and we can do box breathing, which there's four, a count of four and exhale for, you know, a hold and then a count and, and, uh, you know, some do it in a count of four and, and do it around. Some do it in a count of five and exhale for a count of eight. So there's so many, many different ways of finding that and it's finding what works for you what works for you because where you are your breath will meet you your breath will meet you yeah. so I have a question Bettina yes. um, <laughs> since since you have this lovely understanding of both the spiritual side as well as the the technical um, scientific side of this breath work stuff I want to share something with you I have had a heart murmur ever since I was born and the only thing that I see that gives me an issue is sometimes I will gasp like just randomly. Um, sometimes it's worse than others. But do you have any sort of insights of like why does that happen? Other than the fact that my heart stops for a couple seconds and then it starts up again. Like yeah. what is going on? <laughs> that's you know that's beautiful and that taking your gasp um like you said that that's it's it's probably starting and your body automatically knows what to do it's going mm -hmm. like okay holy crap Laura we've got to breathe and all of a sudden you just go back oh and part of that is if, if there was awareness before that you probably weren't breathing there may be uh, that you were stressed that you were holding your breath um, because many times we're not conscious of our our breath and what's going on and our body is it carries wisdom I usually say, like, you know, if you want to know what's going on and you have an ache or pain or you've got something that's going on, ask your body. Your physical body is a messenger of something going on energetically. So when we can tap into that, your breath is automatically, your breath, like you said, without it, we wouldn't be alive. And so your breath is going like, oh, we got to keep her alive. <laughs> so let's remind her to breathe. And it's like that jolt that comes into your body. Yeah. And then the invitation would be, to look at what was happening before that. Were you holding your breath? Was there something that you were going through and experiencing something that's stressful in that moment? Maybe an emotions, maybe something that was going on physical. You might be stressed under a load of, oh my God, how am I going to get all this stuff done? And we actually then, we're, we end up holding our breath. And then that can create more of that, um, of what's already going on with the body. See, it happens every day, but I do find that the more stressed I am, the more it happens. Like sometimes when I'm really stressed, it'll happen 10 times an hour. Yeah. Where 
on relaxed days, it has been that much too. But in general, it does happen more when I'm more stressed. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, beautiful. Just simply, you know, like as you're already doing, put a hand on your heart, hand on your belly, and bring in that awareness and gain with that, as Scott said, just begin to breathe and practice that and maybe do it for 10 and 15 and 20 minutes and 30 minutes. You're building that connection, which is going to um, um, build that connection between your body, your heart, and the oxygen that you're bringing in. You know, it's it's so huge, and it, I'll, I'll dovetail it again into my my story of my crash, and it actually answers a question we've got um, coming yeah. here. When I had my severe brain injury and the, the, the outcome wasn't looking good, I was scheduled to be in a vegetative state and all kinds of stuff like that, and I actually did hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And in hyperbaric oxygen therapy, they put you in a, a cylinder and close the doors and they pressurize you to one atmosphere. So equivalent to 33 feet below sea level. And at that, you can breathe pure oxygen. And my job once a day for one hour for three months was to just breathe deep breaths and in the counts, you know, deep breath in, deep breath out. And for an hour for every day and, and my brain healed in the most profound way and one of the questions is will breathing help with stroke survival and repair from stroke and, and and i'll look forward to your your thoughts on this patina i would say absolutely it's the foundation of all life breath um and also there's a question of is there a link that you have patina where people can get started with breath work and learning what you're talking about because we got some people who are pretty excited about what you're saying so please go ahead. how does it help with stroke and how do we get a hold of you um, it, it, it definitely, as you're saying, Scott, absolutely. I feel that the breath is so powerful and has an innate wisdom within it. It's a, as Laura is saying, like when she's in that, all of a sudden her body's going to go like, and it's taking that gas because the body knows the breath knows. And the most important piece of our whole well being or our self or physicality is our breath because without it, we're not alive. And our breath is the, the piece that we can take with us anywhere in the world. It's the lightest luggage um, to take. It's with us 24 seven. We don't have to go and find it or look for it. It's actually right here and simply by coming aware. And part of that, you know, someone that's you know talking about the stroke, even yourself, Laura, is it's building that muscle. The Scott, that was a dedicated one hour a day mm -hmm. and his body was able to. So if we only do five minutes of it, Mm, that's a, that may not be reaching all the places within your body and building enough of that um, uh, sense of breath and that oxygenation that um, is happening. So it, it does. I say that it's like going to the breath gym. So, you know, start with five minutes a, a day, then go 15 minutes. And but if you only do it Mondays, then it's going to take a take a while. But this is something that, to, you know, to do every day. Do I breathe every day? Absolutely. Am I breathing consciously every day? Absolutely. I'm only, and, you know, checking in to see, see where that's at. Because when we've had an experience that takes us away from that, we're very, I'm going to say, okay, my breath, how critical and how important it is. And, you know, with Scott, of having that, that change and what he has had an experience of, he's very like going, okay, this is very, very powerful. And he's tuned into in, um, in, into the breath. So absolutely. There is, um, uh, so again, I'm going to say that it's like going to the gym. Um, it is like building that muscle and having that commitment to yourself, that dedication. And it's a commitment of consciously breathing, mm -hmm. consciously breathing. That's, the, that's a part of it is bringing in the awareness of that breath. Uh, even Scott said that, okay, I was, uh, you know, like tuning into my body and seeing where that was going. So that's when we bring in and we bring our breath and we do it consciously, then things begin to um, happen. And we'll, we can have experiences of like, wow, um, I'm feeling so much better. <laughs> yeah. Tina, there's, there's so much that can go into breathing, but I want to know what got you into this journey of of breathing and wellness? Oh, excellent question. Uh, well, my journey uh, started many years ago, but I felt, um, yeah, there was just a disconnect. And so uh, that began my journey of reading all sorts of books, going all sorts of workshops and doing all sorts of different things. And then I took uh, my Reiki classes 
And then I uh, was teaching that. And then in 2013, I had my very first experience of breath work. And I, I was just mind blown in regards to the experience. And I just went, I, I went to everyone that I could. And, um, and then I took my facilitator training in 2014. And I've continued that um, training in regards to trauma and sensitive based trainings and different things. Um, because in the conscious connected breath work, which is a very intense, fast, and it can be a very cathartic, sometimes it's too much. So I've dialed that back a little bit to bring it into a simply breathe process. And again, the, just seeing the power of the breath within my own self, um, how it's changed, changed my life and, and just going like, wow, there's, there's something to this. And it's, it can seem magical in some ways in just connecting to our breath and going like, but that's the, that's the power and, and wisdom that's there. And in simply breathing and breathing with awareness. I was doing this one breathing technique with a friend of mine as she was learning and she was trying to practice. Uh, we got to this point where it was like a one second breath, one second in, one second out, one second in, one second out. My body was like, nope, we're feeling an anxiety attack coming. You should probably stop now. And I went, I recognize that. And I slowed back down to a four second breath. But I, I had that choice and I could control that moment. And I also thankfully have done breath work before and understand that it, there is this awareness piece that has to come with any sort of breath work, where it's not just doing the thing. You have to recognize what is happening in your body while you're doing the thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The breath plus awareness, uh, that creates the, the transformation. When so I, I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, there's so much that I love about this. One is that breathing is such a normal part of our day. Nobody pays any attention to it. We just mm -hmm. do it. Oh, let's breathe, of course. Yeah. But when we stop and actually breathe on purpose and with a purpose, it's different. And like I said, it just has to be five minutes a day, but it's, that's what you're doing for five minutes a day. Oh, I'm so busy. It's an investment, not a cost. There's 1,440 minutes a day. You can spare five, honestly. And the next 13, nine, nine, five will be better because you did five minutes. Um, yes. But I think a lot of people think, if I'm in a position of stuck or unwell or broken or challenged that, Oh, it's going to be so hard to get all good again. Listen, let's just start with the fundamentals just for five minutes a day. Just breathe. Like, honestly, pay attention to it and reach out to Bettina and find some skills and, 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 and goals and, and how to's to do different because it, there's different, like you said, Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth is different than bringing in through the nose, out through the nose, breathing in through the mouth, out through the mouth, breathing out through the mouth. Into it's like they're they're different. They do different things. So learn that simple thing of breathing. Do that five minutes a day. And then I'm going to jump in and say, drink water. Yes. And then start to get a little bit of rest. And then <laughs> have some food that loves you back. Right? Like, yes. and then and then move your body. Like people think... Oh, I want to get in shape. I have to start with going to the CrossFit nationals and already being buff. No, like yeah. how, let's just, let's just breathe. Let, let's just start there. And the profound changes when you oxygenate your body are massive. Yes. Bettina, can I put everyone on the spot for the next couple minutes? Yeah. Do you mind? Can we do that? I know where you're <laughs> oh, going. Oh, okay. Because here's my idea. I want everyone listening, replay or live, to just take note on a scale of 1 to 10 how you feel, like stress level, okay? And any other emotion that you're feeling right now, just jot that down. So on a scale of 1 to 10, just whatever number pops into your head, write that down. Pay attention to what's going on right now. And then Bettina, will you take us through like a 60 second ish kind of, I don't know, wherever you feel, <laughs> um, breath work. And then we'll do that again to compare. And that's just 60 seconds. -ish. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Love sure. it. Okay. I'm going to do it too. Okay. So beautiful. I'm just going to just invite a hand on the heart and hand on the belly. And this just brings your awareness into the body. And you can close your eyes if you wish. And we're just going to start with a simple inhale through the nose and a simple exhale through the nose. 
Inhaling through the nose. And exhaling through the nose. We'll do one more round of that. So I'm inhaling through the nose. And just exhaling through the nose. And just to play with this a little bit, we're gonna inhale through the nose. And we're just gonna hold for a count of two, three, and four, and now exhaling through the nose. Inhaling through the nose. And holding for a count of two, three, and four, and inviting you to exhale actually through the mouth. And inhaling through the nose. And holding for a count of four, two, three, and four, and exhaling through the mouth. And just taking a moment just to see what you're feeling, what you noticed, and continue to keep breathing, finding what works for you. And we're gonna just invite a breath in, and then just exhaling. And a second breath in, and exhaling. And one third and final breath in, and exhaling. And I'm just gonna invite you to shake your body, shake your hands, shake your arms, your leg, move your head. <sighs> and then just to check in with where you're at in this moment. Thank mm. you. That was awesome. Oh. Mm. Every time I come back from breath work, everything seems brighter. Everything seems more sparkly. Everything kind of calms down. And it's like s slow motion, like matrix. <laughs> I really want to do. I love it. I'm not sure what everybody else's numbers were, but I mean, I love this stuff. And still, before we did the breath work, I felt like I was a six out of 10. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like I'm a two. Mm. <laughs> so, so yeah. And the scale of being higher number is yeah, oh, yes, lower number is ah, uh, right. So right. So making sure that we're clear on our scale, right? Because I was you. the same. I I was like a six out of ten, like oh, just a little bit tense and everything. And now I'm like, oh, I'm a two. Yeah. I think it's like giving your body a hug and saying, it's okay. Yeah. Because the world right now is just like ah, all the time, and sometimes you have to just go okay yeah it's like and that's like when we put the hand on our heart and our belly it's like i got you i'm here for you because many mm -hmm. times we get distracted and we're pulled away in so many different things but it's like okay here i am i'm here right now and our breath just brings us into this present moment it's like mm -hmm. wow okay thank you and again it's so basic like you said it's the lightest piece of luggage in the world you bring with you everywhere just breathe and there's so many people that are just like, oh, yeah, I'm corporate, I'm executive, I'm a thousand miles an hour, I need time for you stupid breath work. You especially <laughs> need to take some time. For some yeah. Take that time out and then notice actually when you're in that stress mode, it's the cortisol. And yes, you could get a thousand things done, but it's actually when we can dial that back a little bit and we connect to our breath that actually we can actually be more efficient and we find that we actually don't have to push as hard. We're yeah. going like, wow, how, how does that work? And that's simply because we connected to our breath. We came more into a relaxed state. We're allowing for more oxygenated, um, being more oxygenated within our body. And we have more clarity. Mm -hmm. I love analogies. So I'm going to put an analogy to that. So you're standing in the shampoo aisle and there's like 50 bajillion different choices because that's what it feels like. That's what stress feels like. That's what happens before we do the breath work. And all the breath work does is it helps to get rid of the ones that aren't even on our path. <laughs> We're aligned with what we want. And they're just like, ah, this. Yeah. How much could you improve your day? Even after just that 60 seconds that we did 
when you minimize the stress of, because stress is like, that's a threat, that's a threat, that's a threat. So we're looking everywhere versus just where we need to look. Yeah. Imagine if you did five minutes of breathing a day, even if it's drinking your morning coffee, even if it's walking to your car or up the stairs at your office, how could that change your day? Yeah. And this is what we're saying. Those little things can have huge impacts. So Belina, or Bettina, sorry, I know a Belina, but you remind <laughs> me of Bettina. Um, what is it that you're working on right now that you would love to share with us? What am I working right now on right now? I am working on, um, I just opened a new studio here in Sylvan Lake, uh, Alberta is where I live. And uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, I found that, uh, yeah, you're from, from Sylvan Lake, I believe. I, I'm in, in Red Deer, Alberta, but I've opened a new studio called Essence Studio. This is where breath work, um, where I do my classes. I do drumming. Um, friend and I, we do sound meditations. Uh, I have 13 crystal bowls. He has 10 gongs. Uh, you lay down and you receive. Um, so that's uh, very, very amazing. And I'm working on a book right now as well. So hopefully that will get. And I'm working on a Simply Breathe. I, um, I trialed a, an app, actually a challenge app, in, uh, earlier this year of June uh, 2022. And it was a way of, because um, that was a lot of times people would say, like, I just, I want to hear your voice. When I hear you just go inhale mm. and exhale. And so I created this, uh, the app, which helps support people through building the connection to their breath and, uh, you know, finding just less anxiety So and the, the different things uh, that was going on. So that's something that I'm working on as, as well so that it can be accessible um, just as a question, how can more people get a hold of that? It's yeah. like having that app and it's that reminder just to simply breathe. Simply breathe, simply connect, simply be present to whatever's here. Yeah. Okay. I like Aaron's comment. No offense, Scotty. LOL. Shampoo owl. <laughs> I was laughing when you said shampoo owl because, of course, um, I was thinking of the Scottish comedian that does a great routine on that one. Oh, Connelly. I did see that. Ali Connolly does a great one about shampoo. Give us the shampoo, love. Oh, sir, if it were only that easy. Is, reach out. Give us one. What kind of hair is it for? Anyway, it's a whole thing. Um, the shampoo owl thing made me laugh inside. Uh, and I'm fine. I, I prefer my uh, my my hairdo. Um, this is awesome. I love that we're so close too, Bettina. That's hilarious. I had no idea that we were both um, in the area. So that's fantastic. Yeah, we'll have to connect. So what does it look like to work with you? There's an app, which is really cool. A breathing app, which is so... You, you think... We need an app for breathing. We don't need, but it's so powerful to have somebody coach you to that effect. Mm -hmm. So how do we reach, how does people, how do people work with you? Um, well, BettinaMaria.ca um, is, is my website. Um, Essence Studio Sylvan Lake, if they're in the local area, they um, uh, can connect and join some of the activities. Um, I do have a heart to heart call that I run every second, every second Tuesday um for like-minded souls so um that's where we can come in and uh we breathe we uh connect uh, we have uh, soulful discussions in regards to what is happening and the app is just actually re being rebuilt because i did it in in one week uh blocks and i'm actually now building it into a 30-day program mm -hmm. um so that it can be so that is just still in, still in the works um it's mm -hmm. not quite ready to to launch um, but this is kind of like the the kick to to get it going and <laughs> yes That's it awesome. is you know i'm going to uh, i'm going to say something that i shouldn't say with with 20, 2 minutes left but i'm going to say it anyway i i think and maybe you could just smile and nod but the last 2 years there's been a lot of people not breathing because they're, they're going around and they're in, it's the opposite of breathing and it's the opposite of support to their body and it's it, to me i'm sorry it's the opposite of health yes so Absolutely. Uh, getting getting back to breathing yeah it's it's and that's where the simply breathe where i created the simply breathe because we did uh, it was not necessarily we needed this big conscious connected breath and that we're bringing in all these other things we needed to simply just have that connection back to our breath to simply breathe because there there is a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear and lots of things a lot of the unknown 
Mm -hmm. And it's like, what can we know? And it's that that connection to our breath. So I can know that. And then we can come in and we can have that, as Laura said, with the shampoo aisle. Now that I can now I can go and that's the that's the one that I'm going to choose for today. So, yeah, definitely simply breathe. And um, it's it's more important uh, than anything. It's critical to our health, our well-being. Um, the I'm going to say the consciousness of, of humanity and everything that's um, happening because we then can choose from an empowered place of being rather than a fearful place of being. We just talked about that with Rich too. I'm loving how the conversation flows and references back to each other. So Bettina, where do we find you? Um, BettinaMaria.ca oh. is, is the best way. <laughs> I was extra excited. I was, are you uh, on I, social I, media at all? Um, I am on Facebook and I'm on Instagram under Bettina Maria, the, uh, my name there. And so, and same with Essence Studio, though that is going, I'm going to say more for a local, though who knows what will happen with, with that. Um, it can be a place to do recording. It's all soundproofed and, and et cetera. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Awesome. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I typed BettinaMaria.com. I didn't work and it's, it's .ca that matters. So I posted it there. So it looks like Corey posted it. So I get to be Corey right now. It's been great. I was going to say, I was like, is Corey here watching? Cause I thought he was elsewhere. <laughs> I have his login right now. So it looks like I'm you were, how did you, you're pretending to be Corey. I can't I'm remember Corey. the word right now. Oh, <laughs> there okay. we go. <laughs> Bettina, this was wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing the gift of what you bring mm. to the world. And, and just mm. reminding us that this, the simplest, simplest thing mm. is available to us to just hang on a sec and just breathe. Let your whole body know it's okay yeah and then carry on beautiful beautiful <laughs> thank you thank you so much for for everything today and for being here and holding a, a beautiful space to share uh the messages so it's mm. it, it becomes a, the change and it ripples out into the world so yeah. thank you thank you thank you <laughs> thank you Bettina. Oh, have a wonderful day i look forward to you to connecting with you in person since we're so close yes okay thank you bye -bye. okay take care bye bye Oh, that was awesome. Oh, it just gets better and better. And you know what I realized? Today isn't a four-hour day. It's a three-hour day. A three-hour day. And we're in our last interview, which is... It feels like uh, it went so quick. I know. It feels like it's been 15 minutes, although I could eat. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm still drinking breakfast, and it's yeah. 3.17. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I made well, the green next guest, It I'm, looks horrible, but it tastes it does. delicious. Yeah, that's never going to sell my programs. <laughs> <laughs> I made this. Coach Scotty's green smoothie looks terrible after four hours. Yes, it does. <laughs> I'm really excited. I, I've I've spoken with this next lady a couple times, um, Diliana, and I'm really excited to have her on. So I'm going to bring her on to the stream. Hello. Hi. Welcome. You are live and I can hear you. Yes. Yep. Can you hear us? Okay. Oh, it could be that Diliana has not been able to hear us because we can hear you. So that's good. Assume that's can the tech we're working hear on. Us? <laughs> can, can you hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you. So yeah, just um might be a speaker issue where her speaker isn't on yet and not able to hear us. So we'll keep talking. That way lips are moving and at some point the setting will be found. Um, I love that we've had a few people have been watching and commenting, which is great. Uh, Aaron was on for quite a while, had lots of good questions. And then had to so I know that. Uh, yeah. I mean, yes, what so do we do? Can well? you hear me? I, yes, can. we can hear you. Yes. Can you hear us? Yeah. No? I don't think she can hear us. I'm going to switch. Test, that. test. Can you hear me? Yes. But can you, can you hear? <laughs> Well, that would be a good comedy show. I mean, it is. <laughs> who's on first? <laughs> well, it is stressful because, of course, we want this to go really well. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna just chat with uh, Miliana, um, in the studio. Yeah, I put in the private chat. Sometimes you need to log out, log back in. Here you Pretty cool. Well, as we get that figured out, what I'll do is I'm just gonna um pull Miliana off the stream for a second, just um, you know. Yep. She can do that in the background and figure out the sound issue. But uh, 
Yeah, it's been an amazing day. And it was funny for me, like um, working with Bettina in the last one, I had almost, it's only been the last month or even a couple of weeks that I've got back to assigning breath work time once a day and realizing it's really important because I'd gotten away from the practice of it. Me too. Yeah. I've been listening to your videos, your mindset videos in the morning instead yeah. of the videos that I typically listen to. So no, I have not been doing my breath work. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's um it's messaging uh Deliana, see if she can hear us yet. Because I can see. Can you give me a thumbs up? Um, Deliana, if you can hear us now. She can, it looks like that. So I'm going to bring her back in. So you can hear us now? I can hear you, but I don't know. I'm not Yay. sure if you can hear me. I think I my micro you. wasn't work well with the stream yet. <laughs> That's okay. We made it because uh, the problem before was we could hear you, you couldn't hear us. And now you can hear us. Life is good. Welcome. Yeah, life is good. Yeah, I figured it out. Yeah. It's all good. Awesome. Well, welcome to the Blue Talks Amplify Your Message system. Welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> really I'm so excited. You Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. Well, we are, Laura and I are live every day this week, Monday through Friday mm -hmm. from, um, let's see, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mountain Time, which is noon to 3 Eastern time and in in Laura's time it's one to four. It is. So you being our final guest on day one, Diliana, please tell us about yourself. What it is you do that makes the world amazing? <laughs> uh, I'm a sleep expert and known also as a sleep fairy. I bring some magic in uh, uh, people's life by bring uh, them to get this deep restful sleep without medication. Um, by nature way using the mindful breathing and other relaxation techniques which uh, help to fall asleep faster, stay asleep and wake up refresh. Specifically, I specialize in women health after 40 and 50. I'm a menopause coach and helping uh, women to find this balance and uh, confidence again in their life uh, and show them the path of uh, to connect better in their body and mind and also for men to support their significant one going to this transition period and uh, understand better what's going on and how actually can they can help themselves and uh, for self healing journey. And I'm creator of and CEO of Menopause Support Academy. And I'm also host of Menopause Made Easy podcast. Wow, <laughs> that is yeah. awesome. Okay, so first big question. Can you make the transition to menopause easy? <laughs> That's my mission. That's my <laughs> mission. To show the way that it's not the end of the world. Uh, women, if you're going through these changes in not so pleasant way, know that you're not alone. You're not crazy. And there is a way to manage this uh, in easy way. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a lot awesome. of questions about that because I know that I'm not there yet, but there's some changes happening and I don't know what's going on. And I don't know if it's like a medical thing or if it's just the weird way that I am slowly transitioning, transitioning into menopause. Because some fact, of many women are... don't know, uh, as you say, many women don't know what's going no. on. They are not sure. Uh, they're not aware. Uh, most of the women know that they are in menopause officially around 50, 51, 52. And that's related to hot flashes, eventually weight gain, and uh, so on. But in fact, the premenopause uh, and all these symptoms and more can start decades before officially you are in menopause. So even you're 35 and uh, later 30, you can be there. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. I was like, I am getting into my late 30s. Like, Nobody tends to talk about that middle piece between your typical woman who is childbearing <laughs> age, uh, and then you just chunk, there's this silence, and then, <laughs> and then you're in menopause and you're 60. And you're like, wait, but what is everything between like 35 and 60? Yes, it's a, it is a challenge just before that more than this one year that officially you're without period and you're in menopause. Of course, after that in postmenopause, you still can have some challenges, but I think the bigger one is before that. Yeah. 
Yeah. I know for me, obviously I'm a boy and boys don't have that to that degree. It's different for us. We still have a shift, but it's a different shift. Yeah. I know as a nutrition coach, I have seen huge, huge rewards by improving nutrition and diet, like getting rid of polyunsaturated fatty acids and junk food and trans fats and, and garbage and, and cleaning up nutrition has helped a ton. Um, but what else do you work with to assist in, in menopause and stuff? I know sleep is a big deal. And I would say, I'm going to dovetail two things. Sleep is one of the number one things people come through with. They don't sleep. They never sleep. They can't sleep. They can't fall asleep. They can't stay asleep. So you've got a real one, two here that the world needs. <laughs> yes. Yes. The, uh, the tiredness, the forgetfulness, uh, the weight gain, all the other symptoms actually is related with this sleep issue. Uh, again, it's affect uh, all the hormones if you, your cortisol level, it's not work properly. So in fact, if you uh, your cortisol is higher in the evening and lower in the morning, you, it does affect also your sleep and also affect other hormone balance. So um, to get this restful sleep is, I think is crucial uh, to manage the stress is the, the number, uh, I think the root cause of all the issue actually that can trigger other symptoms. Uh, so the stress management is really the, the something that you need to address in the first place. How convenient since we just talked about breath work. <laughs> I love the segues. So Diliana, what, what got you into this specific work with the menopause and the sleep? Is there a story behind that? <laughs> yes, there is. Actually, as uh, many coaches in uh, healers and white workers who uh, dedicate their career to help others, uh, they actually start from their own experience. And mm -hmm. I'm not different, of course. I went through my own issue. I'm thinking in my early 40s uh, as a, someone who is uh, active, uh, have a healthy lifestyle, who come from yoga teaching background. And I was pretty sure that uh, I can manage that. I know uh, a lot about health and wellness. Uh, and suddenly uh, I wake up one morning and something feel uh, quite different. I'm not to recognize myself anymore. I, I feel tired all the time. So uh, that's bring me to a uh, question also, but in in the beginning i didn't pay attention i just pushed myself and uh, i relay an endless cup of coffee in. Uh, in the morning i was uh, so tired but in the afternoon i wanted to go back to bed but what was weird that in the evening i was wired but tired but cannot sleep huh. you're just speaking my life right now <laughs> i like uh, i I love what I do and that keeps me excited and it keeps me engaged. And in the middle of the afternoon when I'm not doing anything, I'm just like, oh, a nap sounds so nice. And if I have time, sometimes I do while listening. It, yeah, to it's a good to have a this rest in between in the day in between. Uh, so it's good to learn how to rest because uh, learning rest, it's not always learning how to sleep, but the body needs to rest more. Or specifically in this age, you need to pay, pay attention more. And if you think a teenage, what they do, they sleep more. So the yeah. menopause actually reverse of teenage years. Uh, you also mm -hmm. need to prioritize the sleep and whatever you can uh, just take this nap. Or if you cannot uh, really sleep, you learn how to meditate that can replace this restful, uh, restful hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. I like that. I have found it a lot easier to meditate now in my 30s than in my 20s. But yeah, sleeping. Okay. Meditation. I call that the precursor to the nap. The precursor. <laughs> Meditation is what starts the nap. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. And then you forget the rest of the video because you're asleep. <laughs> like, I'm just going to meditate. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes on those hard days, because my mind is so excited about a lot of things. It also loves to problem solve. And I thought it would be a wonderful idea as a kid. In my mind, I'm like, you know what would be crazy cool? If ever I went to jail, I would have a fun time because I would just lay on the bench and think and solve problems all day. Okay, it's so, so challenging. Yeah. But every time I laid down that I was thinking and problem solving. 
So now as yeah. an adult, I'm just like, why did I do that? <laughs> Every time I lay down, I think and problem solve. Yes, that's the, that's the challenge to switch off the brain. That's the main challenge that people uh, face when they want to sleep because they cannot switch just from this fight and fight response all the time because we are rushing all day. So in the evening also, you can then take time to train the brain and tell the body, okay, now it's time to relax and slow down and prepare for sleep. Yeah, that was, you know, when I ran my business, uh, I had 27 staff and ran a 15,000 square foot gym and I couldn't sleep at night because it's almost like as soon as I laid down, my brain went, oh, good, you're sitting still. Listen, you have to solve this, fix that, do this, that person. It's like, oh, my gosh, will you shut up? I got to sleep. And it was that whole issue. Um, now, I found a solution for me that worked really well based on an old study on Tetris. Um, where I have the blue light filter turned off on my phone or turned down, I should say, or, or activated or whatever. So I don't have a, a heavy blue light, but I play candy crush or King's quest or what some colors and shapes, problem solving puzzle until my eyes get heavy, which is usually only a few minutes, but it, it changes my brain from all of the concepts and constructs of the world to colors and shapes and colors and shapes. And I'm sleepy. Good night. And that I works for me. Focus. I'm curious to what techniques you use to help people with a super busy brain at night. Like you said, they're wired and tired, but they can't sleep. How do you work with that? And I use also the breath. I use a breath as an anchor to switch from the activity of the brain to just uh, doing inside in the body. I just listen to the breath and uh, connect with the breath. I just do this breathing, deep breathing to calm down and then slowly drift off uh, to deep meditation and from there you, you, you cannot uh, you, you fall, fall asleep really easy mm. i find that doesn't work for me i created uh, a vagus nerve stimulation knowing that the vagus nerve helps to shut off my stress response knowing that for the longest time my mental health issues were stress response based so i'm like if i work with my vagus nerve including some breath work while laying in bed, it would make me more tired, but it would never get me over the edge to actually sleep. But then I, I did the kind of thing that Scott was doing at the same time as the breath work, where I just, I needed my thoughts to, instead of problem solving, to just focus on one simple thing, which for me is Sudoku. <laughs> I love numbers. And then do the breath work with that, that seems to be what's helping me so i'm curious in the comments <laughs> going alone it can be difficult but listening the voice of somebody else oh, or yeah. uh, listen to some music who can just uh, really calm the the brainwave uh, can help you so there's additional resources of course but many people don't know uh doing how to do it by themselves meditate or breathing yeah. so guided meditation or breathing can help them uh, and also prepare the room make it more darker uh, and cooler also make it uh, the environment more uh, um, inviting to rest and uh, also i suggest really um, to switch off from the blue screen a few hours before you start to really prepare to go to bed. If you cannot be, uh, live without uh, computer or t TV, really use the good boot screen to help you with um, the, 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 brain, the brain to calm down and really to, to switch off. So it's, I know that it's challenging to, to overcome this edge with just breathing. But uh, there's additional techniques uh, and tools that I, I, I use to, um, to help you to really uh, switch off. So what is that connection between the breathing and the menopause? Uh, sorry, sleeping and not the breathing. Between the, the breathing and the menopause? <laughs> the sleeping and the menopause. Uh, the sleeping and the menopause. Yes, yeah. So the connection is that the... the, the, uh, the Estrogen and progesterone begin to drop, the, to drop, and that affect your um, how you sleep, and the stress level also can affect how you sleep. So if you're in chronic stress or um, uh, constantly, that can uh, interfere with your um, sleep pattern. So um, mainly because of 
Sometimes uh, the women experience also hot flashes during the day, but night sweats during the night that prevent them also to sleep. Uh, that can also uh, affect their sleep. So there's some many other lifestyle things that affect how you sleep. A sleep affect also the hormone and also affect the symptoms. So it's kind of vicious circle. You don't know what is going first, the the egg or the uh, chicken. The chicken. Uh, so it's kind of right now you don't know who is going first. Actually, you cannot sleep because you are stressed, or you're stressed because you cannot sleep. A little of column A, a little of column B. I didn't think of it as the other direction, though. You said hormones affect sleep, but sleep also affects your hormones. Can you talk more about that? So, as I said, if you cannot manage the cortisol, that can affect also uh, other because uh, serotonin, and dopamine, and melatonin, it's also related. Uh, as you know, many people relate in melatonin uh, to sleep. Yes. But what I teach and what I help you with how you can create natural melatonin with that, and not artificial because you are relating a melatonin just for sleep in a long term can create dependency and other uh, side effects. But if you learn how to create this uh, natural uh, melatonin by yourself using these techniques, uh, using the breath actually, and uh, to help you to manage these uh, hormones, to manage the cortisol, really can help you in natural way to deal with this issue. Mm. Oh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard parents go, my kids can't sleep. Here's some melatonin. And I'm like, did you sleep train them as babies? Like, do they know the difference between night and day? And some of those parents, no, they didn't do sleep training. Others, yes, they did. But again, it's like a lot of it's the habits. So then how much can habits daily habits affect your hormones, your sleep. <laughs> oh, that's huge. That's yeah. a huge. Uh, what I discovered actually my research in my own experience is that how you live during the day affects how you sleep during the night. Uh, because you are constantly active. If you have this habit to do go to cardio after work and not in the morning, of course, in the evening, you're still in a, a high state in a cortisol and uh, you cannot sleep. So the lifestyle, the way you're living uh, it, it affect how you're going to sleep. Also, how you breathe during the day is going to affect how you breathe during the night and also going to affect the sleep cycles. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the, talking about the habits, you need to start to switch a little bit our habits uh, going through um, middle age. Uh, to little bit prioritize more rest, more relaxation, more sleep, uh, and not so much be attached to daily tasks and working until late of the night. So really have to find this balance during the day, find, uh, learn how to rest. And um, of course, if you get these habits in the day, you're gonna, it's going to be more easy in the evening to fall asleep. So do you have sleep habits, Scotty, that you talk about in your your 20 day, 21 day reset? 21 day program. Um, there is a, a total video on sleep for sure. Um, hey. Yeah, you know, I talk a lot about that. There's a lot of different pieces to it. Hmm. Um, you know, a lot of things that Juliana is saying, like how you are during the day matters. Like some people, like I can do cardio five, six, seven, eight o'clock at night. It's no problem. But some people, there's no chance they're sleeping if they do that. So learning yourself, I think, is a piece of it. Mm. And no, I, I specifically is for women. It's yeah. specifically for yeah. women. <laughs> a woman is a different story, but for women in this age, I not recommend go to cardio uh, later afternoon even. Yeah, and and there's a piece about learning yourself that way. I think another big one, maybe you'll echo too, is is screen time, like computers, TVs, tablets. There's a blue light that tells your brain to wake up and. If you're watching that right before bed, like people, we do not have a TV in our bedroom. No. No. Yeah. But a lot of people do. And you're telling your brain to wake up while you're laying in bed trying to go to sleep. And that's, <laughs> that's not helping. It's like, go yeah, this it's way. A, it's a one of the habits that you need to switch off also. Uh, yeah. If you want to have really held good night's sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a big piece of it for a lot of people. I think another thing that that I talked about, and, and I'm curious as to your thoughts on this too, Diliana, is that 
we tend to sleep in 90 minute cycles, mm -hmm. right? So we go to, we go to REM sleep and then we come up and, and you, you kind of almost wake up. You're almost conscious. And I, we, we believe it's from an old throwback to caveman days where you're, is there any danger, anything warring villagers? Are we good? We're safe. Okay. And then you tunnel back down for another 90 minutes and you almost wake up and you, and it's when you almost wake up that you dream. And so yes. we go through 90 minute cycles. So I try to sleep six hours. If I can, I go seven and a half to eight if I can. Right. And if I have a nap, if I can have a 90 minute nap, that's perfect. If I can't, I do through a 10 minute nap or whatever. But what are your thoughts on that, Deliana, as being somebody that studies sleep? Yes, the first um, first uh, minutes of sleep is really uh, very important and it's preferable to be before midnight. So the, the good sleep is really if you go to 10, uh, go to bed in 10 and just have these two hours uh, because it's the first hours is really, really important. After midnight, the circadian rhythm start to, in to be interrupted already. Mm -hmm. And if you cannot fall asleep easily, it's become more and more uh you drift it off uh, just kind of going out of natural circadian rhythm so um in eight hours sleep it's for women specifically is the goal yeah or, or seven let's say i know that many women and many men and many people sleep with six uh i recommend if you cannot really get this seven meditate at least one hour more or um just meditate in the morning meditate in the evening half hour in the morning, half hour in the evening, does bring this additional hour to rest and help you to really uh, feel rejuvenate. Mm -hmm. It's funny that I think in our society too, there's two problems here. One is I'm too busy to sleep for seven and a half hours. I don't have enough time oh. for that, which is a loaded bunk, but whatever. Keep your excuses. It's fine. <laughs> um, that's the great thing about excuses. If you cling to them, you get to hang on to them. So, okay, cool. Um, Cause to my mind, I'm sorry. But if people go, I don't have time to sleep seven hours, I go, no, you're not making it important enough. Everybody's got the same time. You just aren't choosing. So, okay, that's cool. That's your choice. That's one group that don't allow enough time for sleep. But I think the other is, and it's pretty prolific, is people that can't fall asleep. I run into this so many times as a trainer. I have clients that tell me, they're just like, I can't sleep. I'm like, wow, okay. And it's a big complex element isn't it yeah it's a very big, big complex but always related to the brain how the brain works and uh, again this vagus nerve and relaxation and how you can bring ourselves because it's also how it it's again it's training if you cannot there's a way to train yourself to fall asleep fast and easy uh without medication using these techniques uh, wow. And of course, if you pay attention, of course, if you drink a coffee later afternoon, also that can affect uh, huge okay. your uh, how you sleep. So we be, you need to be mindful with alcohol, with uh, caffeine, with uh, exercise, with um, how you rest, and all 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 is have to be taken in consideration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's well, a reason I don't, I don't drink coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one I, uh, of those people. I'm highly affected by caffeine. Yeah. So even teas with caffeine in it, if I drink that anytime in the afternoon or evening, there's no way I'm falling asleep nicely that evening. Mm -hmm. And also after, sugar level. Uh, if yes, you need, you need to, to observe and maintain the sugar level, you know, how much sugar you consume, that yeah. for women definitely can affect also how they sleep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a, a higher fat program to an intelligent degree. Not, I'm not, I'm not into pendulum diets or no carbs. No, I'm not. I don't play that game. I'm in the middle, but um, yeah, like more towards proteins and fats at night, less starchy sugars because your starchy sugar is just gasoline on a fire and you don't need it at night. Right. But yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, caffeine's potent and powerful. I don't drink coffee or caffeine or anything like that or alcohol and that stuff, but uh after my brain injury in 2015, in 2016, my neurologist told me to drink coffee to help me get through while my brain healed because I couldn't remember things and concentrate. And I got really addicted to caffeine and coffee for a while. And then I cut it off totally. It's been quite a few years now since I've had it. But I had a client gave me a Starbucks gift card as a thank you a couple months ago. And I was in the neighboring city last week on an errand and I was driving by and I'm like, Oh, they have a Starbucks. I have this card sitting here. I, I, well, let's go in and get something. And I thought, Oh, I'll get a, 
a spinach egg white wrap. That sounds good. And I thought, you know, I've got a really busy day in the office today. I have all kinds of cerebral stuff. Maybe I'll have a coffee. I haven't had one in a really, really long time. I'll have a coffee. So I had a, I just asked the guy, I'm like, can I just get a coffee? He's like, well, what's kind of coffee? And I'm like, honestly, just do your thing. Like, like a, just, just give me a, a black coffee. Yeah. I don't care if it's Colombian dark roasted by a man with one leg and a peg. And I, I don't care who made the, just, just a coffee. And so I had a coffee at 10 30 in the morning. And at one o'clock in the morning that night, I'm just like, wow, look at all the bumps in the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> there was no chance I could sleep. I think it was two ish in the morning before I became no longer aware. And then, well, I got to get up at six because that's how that is. So. Yeah. Awesome. For people who really, really love the coffee, as me, myself, I just love coffee. Uh, I recommend the decaf coffee just to keep the taste of coffee, but it's decaf, right? There's mm -hmm. always solution or there is a herbal coffee, I think, uh, kind of more natural. Uh, yep. There's other solution also. Mm. Definitely. So yeah. what are some of the things that you're working on right now? I'm prepared to launch a new program for sleep, uh, and uh, I'm kind of in the survey mode, in the search research mode. Uh, I invite people to uh, connect with me to uh, to help me with this survey and this uh, research uh, to uh, answer better in their need. And uh, of course, to to really cover everything that probably they're gonna see in this kind of program. Uh, and yeah, they, they, if somebody is interested to have this conversation with me and see how, uh, where is the missing piece where I can help really with, uh, if they don't believe that meditation and breathing, all this can help. <laughs> they, there's many other things that we can do to, uh, like some mindset, there's, there's many other support that I can bring to help you with, um with a uh, sleep issue and not only but other symptoms of menopause so uh i i will i love to have this conversation with people and uh um just find out how the best i can serve them mm. how do people reach you for that Diliana? because that sounds great uh they i have a calendar i think in my website they can book from their uh their uh, free assessment uh mm -hmm. and free uh discovery call in uh, my website it's menopause support academy.com it is uh, a way to book with me a call so menopause support academy.com yes menopause support academy.com that's a lot of things to spell correctly but i think i got it <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the men men no pause yeah <laughs> men no pause <laughs> that's fantastic and do you predominantly work with women on sleep issues or do you work with men on sleep i have women uh, men actually i have in uh, my uh workshops in my uh weekly session or bread work session also men who have different other issue i cannot sleep also so it's also helpful for uh, men and women uh, and I can help also women, of mm, course, awesome. with sleep. <laughs> what's uh what's a favorite example of somebody who came to you, Ooh. menopausal mess, can't sleep, and and you worked with them, and and how is their life now? Let's I'd love to hear a story on that if you do. Yeah, there, there was one lady who uh mm -hmm. going through perimenopause, other symptoms, and was uh she has a lot of anxiety, and starting working uh implementing these techniques and um slow down and meditation and breathing and mindful breathing and all this it's completely uh, start to uh, she start to feel more grounded for uh, start more uh, to feel more feel more confident to sleep better for sure and um understand that how that works with other symptoms uh, uh, decrease the hot flashes because there's a study with, if you use the breathing techniques that definitely can reduce your hot flashes 80 percent or more uh, than the women who don't do anything and just suffer mm -hmm. <laughs> if you don't do anything you can just suffer go ahead go ahead. <laughs> it's a choice uh, many women say okay that's the thing i have to live with that but it's not yeah. always the true that you have to accept to live with that you you can change this if you uh if you find the proper way that can be changed 
Mm -hmm. I didn't know that there was breathing techniques. A friend of mine just asked on her Facebook page. She's like, oh my God, these hot flashes. What am I supposed to do? It's like, oh, I know a product for you, but it, it doesn't solve the issue. It just helps subside symptoms in the moment. Which no, they cannot know. disappear completely, yeah. but can be more bearable, more easy. Yeah. Uh, you you can also, you can be more mindful what triggered us, what kind of, because most of the time is the stress. So if you're more mindful what trigger uh, these uh, symptoms, you can, uh, how to, you, you know how to balance. Uh, I know that it's very difficult to control yourself in this stage, in these changes. It's it's happened so suddenly. You can laugh one moment, in the next you can cry, and the next you can sh uh, screaming to somebody that is completely innocent, don't know what's happened. Uh, it's really difficult to predict. It's really difficult to control. But bring these habits again. Uh, build these habits uh, to um, to self healing, self love, self control. Uh, with these techniques can really help you to uh, drastically diminish the, the effect of what's happening with your body. Because I know that's very difficult. It's easy to say, but it's very difficult to be in control. You see, many women, it's hopeless, helpless, feeling that they are not in control. But I am here to say you that you can bring the control back if you know how to use uh, the techniques they have a, lifestyle changes in your diet, in your uh, movement, in your exercise, in overall how you live your life. That can help. So my understanding of menopause so far is that it uh, is highly similar to PTSD <laughs> in the symptoms. Yeah, it's, it's, it can be. I don't know if that's a good <laughs> understanding or... Uh, like face palm kind of understanding. Yeah, that's the things that the people don't talk about the emotional aspect of yeah. the uh, hormone change in mental health. Uh, they talk more of physical aspect, like weight gain, hot flashes, of more physical uh, joint pain, um, and so much more. But the emotional aspect is really something to uh, who is really uh, more important to bring. Uh, in uh, attention, I, I can say that many women is kind of deserve a dismiss by the doctors, and because there's complex things going in uh, their body, in their mind, it's emotional, and physical, it's mental. So it's it's really woman in general is complex, and the, going through these changes, it can be very very complicated. But it, it, I want to say that actually you can simplify simplify your life. Prioritize yourself, nurture yourself more, and learn how to really tune inside and find this inside power to help you to deal with these challenges. I would say too, listening to what you have, is that I think for some people it becomes overwhelming. They're in a, their hormones are crazy. They're they're gaining weight. They're not sleeping well getting hot flashes, they, you know, night sweats, all this crazy stuff is going on. And then what do I do about it? And he said, well, there's all these, you need to de-stress. You need to stop watching TV at night. You need to change your whole food process. You need to do this. You need to do that. People get overwhelmed, like, oh, whatever. But I think if we bring it back to just one simple, because it's little things, a little change, and then a little change, and a little change. And, and I would say, Please tell me if I'm wrong. Step one, let's just try some breathing. Just a little bit. Like, does that make sense? That's step one. Because that's easy. I'm mean, our previous guest, obviously, Bettina was talking about breath work. But does that make sense for your world, Diana? If people are looking at what's the simple thing I can just start? The simple I thing I can say is to take it easy in you. Love mm -hmm. yourself more. Mm -hmm. And nurture yourself. I mean, really be gentle with yourself. Don't be so harsh. Don't be, don't put more pressure even in yourself. You have already so much in your shoulders. So just learn how to let go. Just mm -hmm. learn how to be in the moment. This mindfulness really can change your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Self-care. Don't be mad at yourself. <laughs> My stupid body doesn't even sleep. Well, that's not helping. <laughs> <laughs> not helping. Not at all. <laughs> And now they're just asking somebody to just calm down. No. Yeah. yeah, no. 
In in the history of calming down, nobody ever calmed down because somebody <laughs> said calm down. Oh, my favorite is when people are, you're cranky today, aren't you? Well, I wasn't before you said that, but now I am. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Funny how things can flip flop like that. And yeah, you, 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 the, find this uh, humorous side. Find this. Uh, find a way to laugh on yourself and laugh on yeah. the situation. I can really diffuse uh, the tension and the <laughs> craziness. I think uh, find a, yeah, not be so serious, and then find. Uh, and oh, again, that's difficult. It's easy to say, but it's difficult to implement. The last simple thing that I can say is just. With the breath, again, take a deep breath, bring yourself in the present moment and say, okay, just just pause. Just just breathe, let go and see what's next. But just pause for a moment, breathe and see if in the next second something maybe change. So what is your favorite way to show yourself that you care, that um, I can't think of the word right now. Basically what you said just a couple minutes ago of taking that moment to say, grace, that's the word I'm looking for. What is your favorite way to show yourself some grace every single um, day? Just have this me time where I know that uh, it's the moment for me to tune inside, to uh, connect with my soul, to nurture myself, to meditate, to ground myself. Uh, and to bring this love towards myself and others don't just bring generally in uh in bring me in harmony find a way to bring me in a harmony that uh, that can really make me more peaceful and more um cooperative and how to say it? it's it's then if suddenly something happened um it, there's no such much um, force on me uh and reaction is different so learn how to be proactive than to be reactive Ooh, yes the preventative mm -hmm. there are so many times where we spend so much time not even knowing what symptoms we have but then as soon as we start to discover symptoms we see more symptoms then we spend all this time on identifying and trying to fix symptoms when really it feels like there's hundreds of them but if we just gave it some time and to see some patterns, then we can see what that root cause is. Maybe there's one, maybe there's three, but isn't that better than the 10 to a thousand different symptoms that you could be having? Yeah, I agree. Oh, I agree with stretch. I think that's one of the things we should be doing is to stretch. Everybody stretch. Yeah, gentle movements, stretch. Mm -hmm. uh, and, any final uh, comments before we wrap up today's show <laughs> i think i say a lot but uh, again just love yourself more and uh, know that you, you can find support somewhere out there there's so many experts specialists uh that i bring in my um, um show my menopause made easy uh, podcast that you can listen and learn how you can help yourself mm. That's and where's awesome. that podcast? Did you say? I'm in a. Uh, uh, it's audio. It's a not video. It's I'm in a Apple, uh, Podbean, uh, eHeart, Google. Uh, okay. Also, what was that? Um, Spotify. Oh yes. Right. Okay. Nice. Yeah, menopause made easy. Uh, you, in Podbean, you can find it. You know, this platform, you can find it. If no, I can send uh, the link if you if you're interested i can post in the group or uh, uh that can that you can find it uh, and listen this uh, i think it's very useful uh, very helpful for many women yeah, and i oh go ahead i placed the link menopause support academy.com and oh. it's got it's a great website it's easy it's simple it has the podcast link the blog the speaking oh uh, this is a podcast there the podcast is inside yes yeah it's it's listed right on there so yeah so that's and i've i've Posted that up so menopause support academy.com has all of that stuff easy to find. Yeah, I just noticed that my friend Paige said, I'm pretty sure I'm there. And at the timestamp that she wrote it, I'm pretty sure she means menopause too. So yes. I'm like her and I may have that conversation of are we transitioning into is it perimenopause? Is that pre menopause, perimenopause. Uh, yeah, oh, it's just pre <laughs> the thing that happens before. But I am gonna say before. that Scott, I'm 
feeling better already with the whole 21 nutrition reset. I've been having issues for like the last year and a half, no, two years. Mm -hmm. It has not been fun. And I've had lots of doctors talk to me, gynecologists and everything, and nobody seems to know what's going on. So in my mind, I'm thinking if I can just heal my body enough to let my hormones come to some sort of neutral space versus wherever they happened to be at the time, then we'll just see what life is like after I really look after myself, mm-hmm. give myself yeah. that grace and love myself right now. And maybe yeah. that'll make it better for when I do go into premenopause if I'm not there yet. I don't know. I'm sure that's going to be better for you because you start to bring this awareness and start this self-care now. I'm yeah. pretty much sure that you'll be much more easy for you. That sounds good. Mm. One of the things I love to say all the time is that your body loves you. Your body is trying so hard Mm -hmm. to take care of you. And if you would just love it back, (laughs) give it some good food, give it some water, take a moment to breathe, love your body back. So many people hate their body and oh, that's not, your body loves you. We need to love it back. Yeah. Yeah. It's respond of it's energy, you know. It's, it's it. You can talk to your body. You can listen what body you uh, tell you. Remember, I didn't listen my body because and uh, that bring me to burnout. So yeah. yeah, so many people are just like, I'm just gonna grab a coffee and get my body to just <laughs> shut up, and do what I want. Oh, okay. Not <laughs> <laughs> a very good relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you um, have to. Execute what I tell you. <laughs> now right. it's time for exercise. Go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Take this pill and sleep. And take this caffeine. <laughs> more melatonin. More melatonin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's been lovely uh, to chat, Diliana. I really appreciate your time today and for sharing. And I love the work you do. Um, you really are needed. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It was such a pleasure to be with you today and share what uh, I know about and educate a woman that what is possible for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for all you do. Have an amazing day. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Day oh, one. Wonderful. So hmm? many laughs today and yeah. serious talk and like spiritual stuff and scientific stuff. And just like, do you see how it all melts? For those yeah. Yes. It's been a great day. Um, just even Brad from the beginning was so fun and mm. and um, great guy. Lots of smiles and um, you know, working on photography to show women how beautiful and amazing they are. And um, yes. you know, his thirty day voice note challenge. That's a good idea. A little pay it <gasps> forward there. I love that, that reminds idea. me of people's birthdays. Yeah. For the people that I know. I like to send videos for the people yes. that I like kind of know, or if I don't have time, I'm sorry, you don't get videos. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember meeting this one gentleman. His name was Eli. I met him at his networking event because I heard him speak somewhere. Mm. And he had mentioned that he likes video birthday messages. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, when's your birthday? It was like nine months until his birthday. So I wrote it on my calendar. Oh, that's awesome. Over that nine months, I get to got to know who he was a little bit more so then when I did finally send him a birthday video two weeks ago, I wore uh, garb from the SCA. So like Renaissance style dress, because I know he's into the Renaissance fair stuff and the SCA. I sung a version of like old English style happy birthday. Because uh-huh. again, that's his style of thing. And I like wore my hair and everything that way. Holy. And I sent him a video of me singing to him. And he's like, thank you so much for not just sending me a video, yeah, but doing it in a style where it took a little bit extra effort and getting to know me at the same time. Wow. And I was like, there you go. Hopefully you have a wonderful birthday because I've been planning this for nine months. That's awesome. <laughs> but uh, like those like little things mean so much. They do. Well, because it took a lot of time, because it took a lot of effort. So it took like five minutes. Okay. <laughs> but still. Still, that's good. Sounded more impressive. I was quite impressed. Yeah. Oh, what a day! Yes. So we had so good. talking about that, and then Bettina. Talk, or sorry. Well, we had Rich. We had Rich Bontrager first, and then yeah, yeah. he talked about um, 
media presence and stop trying to sell and just be real and inherent and yeah apparently i have to do more kermit the frog stuff which is fun <laughs> and voices i do lots of voices so and then vatina to breath work and diliana tied into that as well the sleep and money but just everything referenced back and forth today and i love mm. when that happens it's like when you watch a good comedian where they start this uptick yeah. of jokes and then at the very end they like bring it around and you're like yes <clears throat> one so of my uh, one of my favorite com comedians did a routine about that he, he he told this big long story yeah and it was a good story it was a fun story he says okay now i told you that story so i could tell you this story and then yeah. and then the next story just built on that but you oh, wouldn't yeah. have understood it if you hadn't had the first story it's yeah yeah each level today has has layered on and we've got another fantastic day again tomorrow so we're back tomorrow at 10 a.m mountain standard time or 12 noon eastern or 1 p.m way eastern time <laughs> you're, you're fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> i love it it was still up on my phone so who do we have tomorrow as i bring it up we've got tracy valco and oh, then yep. Kimberly, Kimberly Knoll, then yep. Alan Simberg, yes. and then Vanessa uh, Benlolo. Benlolio. Benlolio. I, I'm going to enough to pronounce that one. Benlolo. Benlolo. That is an L. I got yeah. a printer. You know how when your printer's running out of low on ink and there's streaks? I have streaks and it oh, makes no. it harder to read. Yeah. I just used my phone. <laughs> you could do that. I printed it. I don't have any ink in my printer. There you go. I need more ink in my printer. This has been fantastic, Laura, as always. I love how we dovetail in for the greatest questions, and it's awesome. It's a yeah. true treat and a pleasure to be with you on the Blue Talks Amplify Your Message series. Mm -hmm. We will see you all tomorrow. Much love, see everyone. Tomorrow. Okay, have a good day. Bye.